You're watching NASA TV. Good morning and welcome. This is Mission Control Houston. This morning, two astronauts have put on their spacesuits and are getting ready to venture outside of the International Space Station for a spacewalk. NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata are our spacewalkers today, and their goal is to install some hardware to the outside of the space station to prepare for the future installment of IROSAs, or ISS Rollout Solar Arrays. And we'll get into a little bit more about what those are in just a minute. But this spacewalk is part of an ongoing effort to upgrade the space station's power system. Today's spacewalk focuses on installing a support structure that a future solar array can be attached to in the future. The support structure is made up of six struts and a mounting bracket, uh, but remember no actual solar arrays are going to be put on today. The spacewalk is a continuation, or a part two spacewalk for Man and Wakata. They began work to install this hardware on Friday, January 20th, and are set to complete the job today over the course of a spacewalk that could last up to seven hours. This includes finishing up some work on the lower strut and installing the mid strut. They'll also be doing some get ahead tasks if time allows. These are our spacewalkers, Nicole Mann. Sometimes you'll hear her referred to as Duke. She's got the spacesuit with the red stripes. She'll be our EV-1 today. And Koichi Rokwada from the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency is our EV-2 today. He's in the suit with, the, with no stripes. So we are in the Quest airlock aboard the International Space Station. That's where these live views are coming from. Quest consists of two parts, the equipment lock and the crew lock. They're in the process of moving our spacewalkers over to the crew lock where depressurization will take place. Uh, but this view you're getting right now is in the equipment lock. Uh, that's NASA astronaut Frank Rubio in the bluish black shirt and the glass is there to your right. And that's NASA astronaut Josh Cassida in the red flannel, the long sleeves on your screen now. He's helping get our spacewalkers suited up with the safer unit. So their spacesuits are on, and now he's installing this sort of backpack stands for Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. We don't plan on using this backpack during the spacewalk, but in the unlikely event that they become untethered or unattached to the space station in any way, they can use these safers to get themselves back. Our spacewalkers are running about 35 minutes ahead of schedule today, and we expect depressurization to begin about five minutes past the hour. Shortly before our live coverage began, the spacewalkers got into their suits and began what's known as their pre-breathing exercise. This is a way for the astronauts to avoid decompression sickness, something that scuba divers uh, have to be careful of as well. They put on masks and began to breathe pure oxygen and also completed a series of arm and leg exercises to purge their bodies of nitrogen. Decompression sickness can happen when gases like nitrogen in our body form bubbles in our blood and tissues. So these preventative measures like breathing pure oxygen and the exercise are critical before spacewalk. So these were already completed before our coverage began today.
So you can see NASA astronaut Frank Rubio not in the spacesuit on the left of your screen there. He's what's known as a suit IV. The name is referring to a crew member who's responsible for getting through the procedures to safely get the spacewalkers out on their way out the door. This includes helping the spacewalker put their spacesuit on, recording the status of the suit, and getting them ready for depressurization. Right now, he's assisting our spacewalker, the one inside the spacesuit, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. So in addition to Nicole Mann, or Duke, as her call sign is, you may sometimes refer her be hear her referred to as Duke. Um, you'll see her in the suit with the red stripes, but another way that you can tell is that our two spacewalkers are from two different nations. So you see that Nicole Mann has the American flag on hers, while Koichi Wakata has the Japanese flag on his. You can see NASA astronaut Josh Cassida in the red shirt in the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. He's also known as a suit IV as well. Again, assisting our spacewalkers get out the door today. You may hear Nicole Mann or Duke referred to as EV-1. That means she's responsible for operating the hatch and its thermal cover. Once depressurization is complete and the spacewalkers are ready to head out, you may see live views of a door swinging open, and that's Nicole Mann in the red striped suit making that happen. She'll be the first to exit the airlock, followed shortly by Koichi Wakata. both spacewalkers now in the crew lock. Um, after they get configured in there with the help of our suit IVs, that door will close and we'll only have views of our suit IVs, Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida. And then here in Mission Control Houston, we'll do a go, no go poll for depressurization. You're watching live coverage of our spacewalk today. This is part two of U.S. Spacewalk 84 that happened on January 20th. But even though it's a continuation, it is indeed called U.S. Spacewalk 85 this morning. This, of course, would make it the second spacewalk for NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata.
You're getting a live view now of Mission Control Houston. The space station is handing over communications between its satellites, and as a result, we've lost our live video and audio feed just for a moment. These communication handovers are planned and expected, and we should get our live views back shortly. In the meantime, we do have a live view of Mission Control Houston. Our flight director oversees everyone in this room and our support rooms that aren't shown right now. Uh, she gathers intel from all of the experts and ultimately makes the decision on how to move forward. And there she is, popping into screen briefly on the lower right of your screen. Our flight director today is Chloe Maring. She's a Pennsylvania native who began her career at NASA in 20, 2008. But on your screen, uh, we have NASA astronaut Zena Cardman, who's our ground IV today. There she is in the black jacket sitting down mid-screen. This is a similar role to a CAPCOM communicating from the ground to the astronauts. On one, we're putting on the final touches here, putting them into the airlock, and can you confirm again that uh, they are not yet hot mic? Good morning, increment 68. This is Drew on console with Xena. We can confirm the crew is not hot mic yet and looking forward to working with you guys today. Great, looking forward to working with you guys as well, and you'll be hearing from these guys as soon as you do make them hot mic. So that was Josh Cassida confirming that we're not able to hear the spacewalkers right now. They've not yet turned on these microphones. It's one of the steps in their procedures. Haven't accomplished it quite yet, but they're moving down the checklist. And NASA astronaut Zena Cardman is who will be communicating with our spacewalkers out on their spacewalk today outside of the International Space Station. So while we wait for depressurization to begin, let's talk a little bit about the IROSAs. These are Roll Out Solar Arrays, I, ISS, RO, Roll Out, and SA, Solar Array, IROSA. They're attached to support structures and are unfurled the same way you'd roll out a rug. They're not designed to replace the space station's legacy arrays, but rather to add, the power, add power to the legacy arrays that they already provide. They are unraveled over the top of the station's rigid legacy arrays, and even though they're partially blocking these legacy arrays from the sun, the IROSAs are so efficient that it actually results in more power generation for the station. So the space station has eight power channels. I'm going to list them for you here. They're 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, and 4A and 4B. So four of the eight power channels already have the IROSAs, rollout solar arrays, already installed. But every IROSA needs to be paired with a support structure with a mounting bracket on it so that it can be properly installed to the space station. During the January 20th spacewalk, Wakata and Mann installed the mounting bracket on the 1B power channel. You see that on the left of your screen. They moved on to work on the 1A channel, but ran into some difficulty during the installation. Teams here on the ground have communicated some possible solutions, some troubleshooting items with our spacewalkers, and they're heading out the door today to give them a try and finish the installation. Remember, no solar arrays are being installed today. We're just getting the hardware in place so that they can be installed in the future. So to recap, four power channels are completed with support structures and solar arrays. They're done. A fifth support structure was completed earlier this month, and today our spacewalkers are installing the sixth. And in the future, these two structures will have solar arrays on them too.
And NASA astronaut Josh Cassida in the red flannel shirt has just exited the crew lock, having situated our spacewalkers today and has moved back over to the equipment lock. He and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio on the left of your screen there are going through a list of procedures to get these spacewalkers ready for depressurization. It has not begun yet, but we expect it pretty soon. You're not hearing anything right now, and that's pretty normal. Our spacewalkers have not yet turned on their microphones into a configuration that will be able to hear them, but we should be able to hear their voices, as well as the voices of our suit IVs, Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy, pretty shortly. And the hatch is now closed. Our spacewalkers are on the other side of the door with that window there. Right now, the crew lock and the equipment lock are roughly the same PSI. A space station is kept around 14.7, or what you'd experience around sea level here on Earth. Uh, that's what your body would experience. Um, once depressurization begins, they're going to slowly bring the crew lock, so the other side of the door, down to vacuum. They're going to slowly decrease the pressure, and then they're going to stop when it hits about 5 PSI to do a uh, check on the spacesuits, make sure that there's no leaks and everything's in a good configuration. And with the go here in Mission Control, they're going to continue on to go down to vacuum. Station on one for EMU pre-brief, step 76 and 77 are complete. Airlock Houston copies, we've got uh, 78 in work. You guys uh, will be picking up in uh, step 80. And 
And uh, Drew, if you guys can uh, also take 79 and 80.1 and just let us know when the crew is on mic. Yeah, we got that in work as well, and uh, so in a short order, crew will be hot mic Thank you. Okay, copy that. Thank you. And Crew Lock Houston, you are hot mic. And we just heard the voices of our spacewalkers today for the first time, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, our EV-1, as she just referred to herself, and EV-2, Koichi Wakata. Okay, Koichi, switch, deepest pump power off, OFS. Verify the deepest pump power OFS. Right, deep bus pump enable LED on on. Verify the on. Houston, looking for your go for step 84. Stand by on step 84. Airlock Houston, uh, team's ready here. You're go to start uh, work on the deep rescue card. We got two minutes to hand over. Hey, copy, go, and understand three minutes to hand over. Thanks, Drew. We are going to get started on the crew lock deep bus. Koichi, first step is for you. On the U.S. are on. Deep bus on power is on now. Copy on. EV expect to open. Hey, deep breath up, manual ISO valve open. And for both of you, um, shoot pressure gauge and then it remains below 5.5. Five. Eagle 1 copy. You're hearing NASA astronaut Frank Rubio communicating with our spacewalkers, Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata, who are just on the other side of the door with the window right there. Depressurization has begun with a go for Mission Control Houston. All right, guys, we are depressing down to 5.0. When we hit 6.0, you can both expect an alert tone. So as depressurization is underway aboard the International Space Station, we're in a brief handover of our communication satellites. We expect to get our live views back shortly. Uh, meanwhile, let me talk about some key figures here in the room. Uh, NASA astronaut Zena Cardman is our ground IV today. This is a similar role to CAPCOM, but she'll specifically be talking to the astronauts outside of the space station. 
She joined our astronaut corps in 2017. And another key member here in Mission Control is our spacewalk officer, Keith Johnson. He knows the ins and outs of the spacewalks, of the spacewalk, all of the steps that the crew needs to complete, and he consults with his team throughout the spacewalk and any real-time decisions that need to be made. We're back with our live views of the International Space Station. The crew lock is just above 10 PSI, making its way down to 5. This depressurization process can take some time. So while that happens, we're going to do a little rundown of today's tasks. Right out the starting gate, they'll turn on their HECAs, which are high-definition cameras. Sometimes we'll be able to see views from their point of view. They'll grab all of their supplies and tools that they need and make their way over to the work site on the 1A power channel to set up shop. Here at the 1A work site, they'll find most of a completed support structure that looks like a pyramid. They built this during their last spacewalk earlier this month. It's almost complete. The sounds that you're hearing now from your screen is normal and is part of the depressurization process. That just means everything's underway. Once our spacewalkers are at their 1A power channel work site today, they'll be at this support structure that they've built during their last spacewalk. Then they're going to do some troubleshooting on the parts of the structure that gave them some trouble during the last installation and finish up their work. Then we'll move on to some other tasks to help our spacewalkers in the future. Uh, Nicole Mann will route some cables needed when the solar arrays are installed. She won't plug them in, but she'll follow a path to get the cables to where they need to go. 
And while Nicole Mann routes these cables, Koichi Wakata will swap out a sticky portable foot restraint for a smoother one. And Nicole Mann will join him at the end of this task, also relocating a portable foot restraint just to bring it closer for future spacewalks. The pressure in the suit lock has reached 6 PSI, slowly going down to 5, at which point they'll do a leak check on the spacesuits and then proceed down to vacuum. Guys, we're coming up on 5 PSI. Koichi, the next section will be for you. Okay. All right, Koichi, deep press pump man ISO valve is closed. You can both expect an alert on. Okay, deep press pump man ISO valve closed. Okay, next you're both going to be performing a leak check. So switch display, you're going to go to status until you see leak check question mark displayed, and then you'll have a long yes to select. AB2 is in the leak check. Correction, easy one. Okay, let's have a lead check uh, selected and just follow the uh, displayed instructions. Let me know when you're complete.
Two one, check complete. Two one, we check complete. Okay, I copy both of you, check complete. For both of you, check. O2 actuator, EVA. It works. It works. EV1, O2 actuator, EVA. Copy this. EV2, O2 actuator, EVA. Copy, Koichi. Koichi, deep press pump, man ISO valve, open. You can both inspect an alert zone. Deep press pump, man ISO valve, open. Okay, and I will open the emergency amp. Emergency MPEV is open. You can both monitor your suit pressure gauge. Make sure you remain below 5.5. Either one. TV2 copy. And from here, we'll be depressing to 2.0 before our next action. So the crew lock, which is just behind the door with the window there, started out at 14.7 PSI, same as the rest of the International Space Station. It has gone down to 5 PSI, where we went through a expected pause in the depressurization to check for leaks. Seeing none, we've continued on with the depressurization, and the PSI sits at about 4, going down to vacuum. If you're just joining us this morning, we're in live coverage of a spacewalk. They have not made it out the door yet, but are expected to soon. What you're seeing on your screen now is not actually our spacewalkers. These are NASA astronauts Frank Rubio on the right and Josh Cassida on the left looking into the window there. Just on the other side of the door are our spacewalkers uh, donned in their spacesuits. They're getting ready to go out the door after the pressure has gone down to vacuum. The spacewalk has not officially started yet, but after it does, and our spacewalkers have gone out of the hatch, they plan to make their way over to the 1A work site where they're going to finish up construction of a support structure that will one day house a IROSA, or ISS Rollout Solar Array.
Okay, guys, we're coming up on 2 PSI. Koichi, the next action will be for you. Okay. Defense pump, man, ISO valve closed. Defense pump, man, your ISO valve closed. Copy. Koichi on the URA, switch. Defense pump, power off, OFF. Defense pump, power, OFF. Okay, and with that, I will turn you over to Xena for your initial teleconfig. Godspeed, you guys are going to crush it. Awesome, thank you, Frank and Josh. Thank you, Frank and Josh. You guys are awesome. Hello, EV-1 and EV-2, your ground IV and the whole ground team are here, ready for your tether checks. Okay, Zena. Starting with EV-1, let's start with my left waist tether is attached to my left ring extender, gates closed, sliders locked, back on black. My safety tether is connected to my right V-ring extender. Red hook is closed, red is locked, black on black, yellow hook is attached to the green rail, gates closed, white is locked, black on black, green hook is attached to the red reader reel, it's closed and it is unlocked. Both my reels are unlocked. And I have my anchor to my mini workstation. My right weight tether is connected to my right D ring extender. It's closed, slide is locked, black on black. And can we do you have eyes on your anchor hook to my weight tether? Yes, your our anchor hook is attached to your right weight tether of both hooks, gate closed, hook locked, black on black. Uh, EV2, my left waist feather is attached to the tailbox during it, extend the gate closed, hook lock, lock on lock. The small hook of my left waist feather is attached to my left, giving it extend the gate closed, hook lock, lock on lock. My red hook is attached to my left, giving it extend the gate closed, hook lock, lock on lock. Yellow hook is attached to the green reel, gate closed, hook locked, lock on lock. Green hook is attached to the red reel, gate closed, hook is unlocked. And then the anchor hook is attached to, as I reported to Duke's right waist feather. On my right side, right waist feather, small hook is attached to my uh, right gearing extender, gate closed. Copy all, Koichi. If I could just check that your reels are both unlocked. Okay, both reels are unlocked on EV2. Copy all, EV1 and EV2. That's a good config for both of you. All right, continuing along with our depress here. When the crew lock DPDT is approximately zero, you can both expect an alert tone. You just heard the voice of our ground IV, NASA astronaut Zena Cardman, communicating with our spacewalkers. You'll be hearing her voice a lot more as our spacewalkers get out the door today. They just went through the configuration of their hooks and tethers. It's very essential to stay attached to the International Space Station while they're maneuvering all around to their different work sites, retrieving the portable foot restraints that are in their tasks today, moving out to the 1A work site. It's important that they get all of their hooks configured, not tangled, and in a way that they're able to move freely. And so that's what our 
ground IV Xena Cardman was going through with them, and it looks like everything is in a good configuration. Depressurization is still underway in the crew lock. We're sitting at about 1 psi going down to vacuum. Doesn't exactly have to be 0, 0.0, but they are going down maybe around 0, 0.5 or so. In the meantime, let's talk, let's introduce our spacewalkers today. NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is our EV-1 in the suit with the red stripes. You may hear her referred to as Duke. And we have Koichi Wakata from Japan. This is his second spacewalk, same as Nicole Mann. They both went on a spacewalk on January 20th to begin the installation on this mod kit, so to speak. It's what the future solar arrays are going to sit on. So this is their second spacewalk, continuing that task. Their first one lasted seven hours and 21 minutes. And this spacewalk is the 259th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. And the sixth spacewalk of Expedition 68. We expect depressurization to be done in less than 10 minutes, uh, going from the original pressure of the International Space Station, 14.7, down to 5 when they did their uh, soup check, make sure that there's not any leaks in there. It went pretty quickly, but when we're going from 5 down to vacuum, the process is a little bit more deliberate, more careful. We want to make sure our spacewalkers are healthy and ready for their spacewalk, so we do move a little slower. The crew lock is about 0 0.8 psi going down a vacuum. We expect NASA astronaut Nicole Mann to be the first out the door today. She'll be followed shortly after by Koichi Wakata, but before Koichi Wakata fully egresses or exits the airlock, he'll be handing some equipment to Nicole Mann that they'll need on today's spacewalk. This includes the mid-strut. Remember that they've already completed most of the structure that they're building today, but they didn't complete the mid-strut excuse me, they didn't complete the mid-strut. So they're taking that out with them to their work site. So Wakata will hand man the mid-strut. He'll also ha hand her over a cable bag that they might need later in the spacewalk. 
and then he himself will egress or exit the space station. We're getting close to a PSI of 0 0.5, which means you'll begin to hear some chatter from our suit IVs that you see on screen there. NASA astronaut Josh Cassida on the left and NASA astronaut Frank Rubio on the right with more instructions for our, our spacewalkers. NASA astronaut Frank Rubio there patiently waiting as the pressure gets down to 0 0.5 PSI, demonstrating the effects of living in microgravity.
crew, we are less than 0.5 PSI. You are go to open the EV hatch and stow. Good work. Mission Control has given the go to open the hatch. I push your feet down. And with the go from Mission Control, our spacewalkers have released a valve that opens up the okay, outer thermal cover. Okay. Come up a little bit. Yeah, I'm also rolled. Shortly after this thermal cover is popped open, then the hatch itself, the actual door they egress okay. out of, will open. I'm going to come down so I can get it latched here. Okay. Can you let go of feet? I'm going to come my okay. feet back. Okay, I let go of your feet. Okay, the hatch is open and in the hatch key. Okay, we copy hatches open, and Josh and Frank, you can take the emergency MPEV closed. Copy, Frank. Okay, crew, on your DCM, switch power to bat, stagger your switch throws, expect a warning tone. Sorry, you need uh, two batteries. Are you already there, Kobe? Yeah, sorry, I, I flipped the. Uh, okay, no worries, I'm going back. Okay. Battery. Copy both in battery. Switch your display to Pro to verify a functional display. B1 has a good display. B2 has a good display. Great news. On the UIA, switch power for EV1 and 2 off. Or EV1, LED2, both off. Four LEDs are off. Copy. Four LEDs are off. Disconnect SCU from DCM. It works. It works. And you heard our ground IV today, NASA astronaut Zena Cardman here in Mission Control with us, talking to our spacewalkers just on the other side of the door that you see there with the window, walking them through some of their procedures before they get out the door, one of them being turning their spacesuits onto battery power, which marks the official start of the spacewalk. And both spacesuits have been switched to battery power. EV1, you can also install your DCM cover. The DCM cover is installed for EV1. Good 
You both have your SEUs stowed with DCM covers installed. Check the press pump man ISO valve closed. The press pump manual ISO valve is closed. Take your TCV max hot. And now that our spacewalkers have turned their suits onto battery power, we have an official spacewalk start time of 6.45 a.m. Central Time, 7.45 a.m. Eastern. This spacewalk is expected to last up to seven hours to complete installation of a mounting bracket that will one day house an IROSA, or ISS Rollout Solar Array, in support of giving the space station a power upgrade. Max Hot. Switch water on. Water's on for EV1. Water on. Copy water on for you both. Check your DCM is blank and bite is off. DCM blank, bite off, EV1. DCM blank and bite off, EV2. Okay, take your TCV, set as desired. Reminder, report to MCC on subsequent TCV changes. Do you want in work? We do in work. And seven. Okay, report your soup P gauge to MCC. Soup P gauge for EV1, 4.2. EV2, 4.3. Copy 4.2 and 4.3. Set your visors as required. You'll be coming out into a day pass. Copy day pass, visors down. Visors down, EV2. As our ground IV NASA astronaut Zena Cardman just relayed up to our spacewalkers, the International Space Station is in an orbital daytime. Space Station is cu currently over the South Pacific Ocean, and it's nice and lit as our spacewalkers get out the door today. Okay, with that, EV-1, you are ready to open the hatch thermal cover. Release the hook from the magnetic plate D-ring, attach the hook to the stowage tether point, and cinch the strap until it's snug with six lines visible. Short. Our spacewalkers have completed steps with our ground IV that they have to do after depressurization. And NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is opening the thermal hatch cover as part of her responsibilities as EV-1 today. You can see the motion in the dead center of your screen.
the thermal cover book is temp stowed and six lines are visible. Copy, Duke. You are go to open that thermal cover, egress the airlock, and turn on your HECA. Okay, the thermal cover is open and I'm egressing. The hatch is open, and with the go from Mission Control Houston, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, our EV-1, is egressing or exiting the airlock to begin her second spacewalk that began at 6.45 a.m. Central Time. Great work, Duke. You can turn on your HECA. Koichi, you'll get the mid start ready to transfer to EV-1. Okay, HECA's on for EV-1. Okay, uh, you need to copy. And Duke, can you see the uh, strip? I can. Stand by. Okay. NASA astronaut Nicole Mann has exited the airlock. You can see her on your screen in the suit with the red stripes around her thighs. Let me get my uh, red on. Okay. Koichi Wakata is going to now hand her some equipment that they'll need during the course of their spacewalk. might hear some chatter about turning on their HECAs. This is one of the steps in their procedures. We may occasionally get views from their point of view. Nicole Mann's helmet camera would be listed as number 22. You might see that number burned into some of the screens. That means we're looking at her point of view. Koichi Wakata is helmet camera number 20. Brief hand over here in Mission Control, but we expect to get our live views of our spacewalkers back soon. Your next steps, once you've got that okay, red stone, will be to transfer the cable bag That's to EV-1. Okay. 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 So while we were in that handover, NASA astronaut Koichi Wakata just handed Nicole Mann uh, what she's holding there. That's the mid strut that they'll need to install later today. And he's in the process of handing her a cable bag that they'll be using towards the end of the spacewalk now. She noted that she'll be stowing the mid strut on her BRT, that's what she's working on, that refers to the body restraint tether. Like we talked about earlier, they've got a number of tethers and hooks to attach okay. themselves okay. and their equipment to the space station so it doesn't float away. Okay. Can you my cable bag? Here we get one tight in here. Okay, I have the uh, rat down 
to the airlock. Okay, so can I release the red here? Can I release the um, okay. airlock red? If I'm okay, ready. I'm releasing the uh, red from the cable bag. The cable bag that is released. Okay, with that, uh, then I can easy to also egress. If from Koichi, you can egress the airlock. Turn on your HECA and receive that cable bag from Duke. Koichi Wakata has successfully handed both the mid strut and the cable bag over to Nicole Mann. He's set to egress or exit the International Space Station and take that cable bag back from Nicole Mann as soon as he's out. We're not actually installing these cables today on today's spacewalk, but rather these are some get-ahead tasks that they can do to help future spacewalkers get the cables where they need to go without actually plugging them in, making sure they're not tangled and out of the way. Okay, umbilical is still at the limit. And Koichi, it's IV Hatch Zenith, if you get eyes on. IV Hatch Zenith. Okay, copy. As long as you okay. both have your BRT RETs and all of your expected RETs on your mini workstation, Koichi, you can secure that RET in the airlock if you prefer. You can also take it out yeah. with you. Okay, I, uh, unless there's a need for that, I will keep, I will throw this in the airlock. Koichi, we recommend actually bringing it with you if you want to attach it to your mini workstation okay. or to a bag. Okay. Okay, that's complete. And then I'm going to clear the umbilical.
NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is there in the upper middle of your screen in the spacesuit with the red stripes. She's carrying some equipment with her. Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata is still in the airlock, working his way on getting all of the equipment that he needs and working on egressing or exiting the airlock. Okay, umbilical is now clear. Great job, Koichi. And just let us know if you're uh, grabbing that red and taking it with you. Yes, I'm not taking the red with me. And I attached, reattached the uh, CU pouch onto the airlock. So, uh, tell everything if it comes back. Okay, copy. And did you just stash the red on your mini workstation? Yes, it's on my mini workstation. Perfect. Thanks so much. Okay, no problem coming out. Okay, I'm still attached to my desk. Okay. I got it, thank you. We're getting a view of the spacewalk from NASA astronaut Nicole Mann's point of view as Koichi Wakata exits the airlock. Starting to get some Earth views as well from her point of view. The International Space Station is flying over Chile at the moment. I'm uh, to the cable bag, and then the RT, the jaws closed, the paddles are out. And I'm going to turn on the hecka right now, hecka. Uh, I see hecka, green LED on now. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think you can let go. Koichi Wakata now receiving the cable bag. He had initially handed it to Nicole Mann just to egress great. and is now and taking it back. config outside the airlock. Koichi, we'll get your HECA turned on. I think you did already. And then we'll take buddy checks. Yeah, the 
uh, your left, uh, right, safer handle, and then uh, B. Left and right, both the safer handles are down. Weather is good, and then I see the mid shut, and looks uh, good. Okay. Copy you both. That's a good check. We'll take a baseline half as well. Okay, I got a uh, dry baseline hat for EV1. EV2 has the same dry baseline hat. And stand by for you both. We may have you just check Koichi's safer handle door, check that the door did not actually come open. Let me know if you need a, uh, if you have a good view in the HECA. Okay, Duke and Kuichi, we copy that. We trust your eyes on. And with that, Duke, you can translate to the anchor location that's at the S1, S3 interface just below the starboard seat of cart. As you start translating, just a couple cautions, avoid contact with radiators and flex hoses, and don't contact the TUS cables. And after completing their buddy checks, they are off onto their work sites. Uh, during these buddy checks, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann uh, checked out their counterparts, made sure that the green lights were on on their cameras, as well as some others. They also checked out their safer handles. Remember safer we talked about earlier in the coverage, safer being the simplified aid for EVA rescue. That's these backpacks they're wearing on their backs. Copy, Duke. And Kuichi, in the unlikely event that they're separated from the space station, like. these safers can get them back. Okay, copy that. In the unlikely event that they do get separated from the space station, there's a button that deploys handles that control these safers, and it's easy to accidentally push this button, so they were just discussing and making sure that these handles are in fact down on both, both spacewalkers, and we confirmed that they are, and so now they're off to their work site. And Koichi, if you could also tend the hatch thermal cover closed, that would help us a lot. It worked. Okay, we great job putting a uh, four man spray laser at the top of the beat of spur. Okay, great, thank you. Good. You're getting the point of view of Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata as he works to close the thermal hatch cover. Meanwhile, Nicole Mann is off to her work site. You may have heard them discuss the S1, S3. In terms of orientation of the space station, this refers to the starboard side. Of course, in space, it's it's tricky to find your way around, so they do use starboard and port, just like on a ship. I'm not at starboard. You know, what's my mile marker? Checking on that mile marker, Duke. It'll be right at the S1, S3 interface. I'll get you a mile marker. Okay. So S1 is pretty close to the center of the space station, and when you get more towards the outer edges, they refer to that as the S6. And Duke looks like 5760 or so for the mile marker. 
This is the point of view of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata is still at the airlock. He'll join her shortly. Copy, Duke. You'll attach your EV-1 anchor hook to S-1 handrail 3217. And that's the smaller diagonal one. Duke, you can now attach Koichi's EV2 anchor hook to S3 handrail 3011. That's the slightly longer vertical handrail. Now that, both spose, now that both spacewalkers are outside of the hatch, they're working on setting up their work sites, Nicole Mann, making her way over and setting up some anchor hooks. You may hear about these anchor hooks throughout our coverage. It has to do with moving around the space station and configuring your tethers. You could kind of think of it sort of like rock wall climbing. If you're familiar, you have to, you have your anchor right at the top and you have your rope supporting you. You're free to move left, right, up and down, but your anchor hook stays the same. Part of their task today is to relocate some of these anchor hooks a little later. We choose anchor connected to 3011. It's called Spider's Lock, it's black on black. Copy, Duke. And standby crew, Koichi, we're seeing your safer door is actually popping open. We'll get words to you in just a moment. Okay, crew, we actually recommend that Duke head back to the airlock to help Koichi with that safer door. You can leave the anchor hooks where they are, and Duke, head back to the airlock. Okay, you want copy. Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata here at the airlock, the center of your screen, working on closing the hatch. Is it partially open or is it deployed? Just the door is partially open, and so I think if we have Duke translate back to you to help get that door closed again, that'll be better than uh, having us possibly have that come uh, even more open and actually deploy the safer. Okay, that sounds good. Stand by the back, Koichi. Okay. It looks like the, uh, the fail lead is, uh, like it helps. Right, right, yeah. right. Actually, what's down on the cedar floor, right? At the very top of it, like right below that cedar cart. Oh, ah, okay. That's where I put it. Let's put Back it to the point of view of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. Okay. 
She's heading back to Koichi Wakata, who is at the airlock working on closing the hatch door. Part of Koichi Wakata's safer unit, that backpack that he wears on his back, is popped open. It's really difficult to reach behind you in these spacesuits, so Nicole Mann is making her way back to help him pop that back into place. And Koichi, while you're there, you can release your waist tether from the airlock D-ring extender and close that thermal cover. Copy that, teamwork. Okay, my way, left way there is uh, that stroke with your airlock giving extender and my thermal cover is now closed. Okay, copy. Okay, can we do it looks like that safety that it did not hold at the top of the suit of fur. It is clear of me now though, it is station starboard. Okay. Nicole Mann now re-entering your frame on the left side of the screen. She is now with Koichi Wakata at the airlock. Orientation. Will you take access the uh, um, safer door? We take a look here. Hey, Duke, your feet are caught on Koichi's safety tether. Just watch out there. They're currently behind your calves. for you guys as you're getting set up. A reminder, there's a pin for that safer handle door, the safer door that's going to have to go back into a hole. And so I would recommend that Duke, you hold the door closed, pull up slightly on that safer handle, and then fully close the door and try to reseat the handle in order to get that handle back in the pin. Kalisi, can you go on your back more? Just lift your hips a little more towards me. Okay, that's good. Okay. The safer unit is in the center of your screen there, so you see the American flag, NASA logo. Behind it, oh, we have the safer unit that's not designed for use during the spacewalk, but in the unlikely event that they get untethered, they can use this device to get them back to the space station. Koichi's Wakata, Koichi Wakata's is being a little sticky, so Nicole Mann is assisting get it into the right configuration. Yeah, it was like the tiniest bit out. I pushed it, uh, pulled up, and then down, and I felt it click in, and now it looks um, 
totally flush. Nicole Mann's Great point of work, view now. Guys. We're checking in your heck of views. Sounds like a good config. Thanks so much. Thank you, Duke. And with that, both of our spacewalkers are out on their way to the work site. This work site being the 1A power channel on the International Space Station, where they're completing their work, installing a support structure, a mod I'm kit, if you will. Okay, I'm coming up on the field right now. I see your face each other. Okay, pause right there. Can we see? Let me just get past you here. Okay, I'll pause here. This work site that they're heading out to, they'll find. out at their work site at the 1A power channel, they'll find a structure kind of similar to a pyramid that one day the IROSA's rollout solar arrays will rest on. They're almost completed with it, but not quite done. Uh, what you're seeing on your screen now is a visual of the mod kit that they're finishing up today. It's made up of six struts and one mounting bracket where the solar array will go. That's in the blue. Of course, the real thing's not colorful, like our graphic here, but for the sake of explaining, uh, check out the pink upper triangle and the blue mounting bracket. These are already complete. Your S4 worksite. On the bottom, in the gray, you'll see the lower strut. It's installed, but it needs the lower bolt on the left lower strut to be checked out. They'll need to troubleshoot on that bottom bolt to finish the job. And then the orange line in the center of the graphic is the mid strut. And today they'll need to completely install the mid strut. And that's what Nicole Mann is carrying with her. While troubleshooting this lower strut, they'll need to make sure that there's no gap between the strut and the physical bearing. They'll essentially want to confirm that the two pieces they've connected are flush and not angled with an uneven gap. 
They'll also do a wiggle test on the same piece of hardware to make sure that the bearing moves with the strut. They want to see that the bolt and the bolt canister can move together, that the bearing and the strut move together. Outboard on the non-radiator side of the IEA. Could you uh, see that at the anchor point of the safety tether? Okay, I should be clear of you, please. Okay, I, I see your safety tether, so it's clear. I'm going to continue to translate. Okay, just be aware, since I'm on this side, it goes a little bit, uh, seen a, like a little above your head, so just keep an eye on it. That's that, I see that. Great deconfliction, guys. And I've seen my gauntlets are in place. Copy, Koichi, gauntlets in place. And as you translate outboard, also please don't translate on the radiator base handrail. Copy. And Koichi, we... have a local down, and I'm going to test for the mid -strut. Copy, Duke. You'll be looking for S4 handrail 2231. Koichi, we recommend fair leading at S4 handrail 2213. S4 2213, copy. And that's after you cross over to the radiator side. And then once you're on the radiator side, we'll okay. be heading outboard to the keel pin. Okay. So I want to take a minute to go over some of the directional yeah. cues that you might be hearing. Yeah, that's on that. two, two, one, four. Copy, fair lead on 2214. That's looking good. We've got a great view in your HECA. So if you hear an S or a P, we're going to be talking a lot about the S today. It's the starboard side of the space station. It's paired with a number, um, S1 being very close to the center of the space station, S6 being as far out as you can go. We're also hearing words like in inboard and outboard. Inboard means you're moving towards the center of the space station, and our ground IV, Zena Cardman, has told them to go outboard, meaning more towards the outer edge of the space station. Okay, copy. 2235 is exactly where you'll be stowing that cable bag. Okay. Reminder, you'll want that handrail toward the non-radiator side. Okay. Yeah, I've got the mid strut and adjustable down to handrail. 2231. Perfect. Thank you. Copy. And once you're done with that, we'll have you get in position near the lower strut.
Duke, once you're happy with that mid strut, we'll have you head over to the lower strut and actually get your eyes on. We'll take a wiggle and gap check from you. We've got a couple seconds to a hand over here. on the right strut though, right? So we'd actually like you to I just head to the left side, left side um, since we've got Koichi stowing that uh, cable bag. Yeah, we're coming up on a sunset. Okay, cable bag is stowed at the, uh, at the, at the three side. We're in a brief handover period now. The space station in orbital daytime as it flies over Ukraine, nearing an orbital nighttime. So for this reason, our ground IV and spacewalking group here on the ground in mission control that you're seeing now have asked Nicole Mann to take a look at the lower strut. Remember, we're talking about two different components that they have left to install of this structure. They want to check out the lower strut that cable bag. and totally we'll install the mid strut. Also head out to the left lower strut. NASA astronaut Nicole Mann has stowed the mid strut and now she's working on inspecting the lower strut. Really want to get both of your eyes on and get those wiggle and gap checks done as soon as possible. So we'll have you both heading over to the Sorry. left lower. Yeah, I believe I'm just going to go outward of the APFR. Copy, Duke. I like that plan. We'll leave the deconfliction up to your eyes. Strut. You've got a view of the, the ladies in charge of the room here. Um, in the middle of your screen, in the black blazer, and the darker hair is Chloe Maring, our flight director today. And the woman just to her right is with the blonde hair and the black blazer. That is NASA astronaut Zena Cardman, and you are hearing her voice communicating the plans of our spacewalking team here in Mission Control relayed to the crew through Zena Cardman. We're back with our live views now. NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is going to get started checking out the lower strut that they're working on, doing a couple of tests while we're in an orbital daytime. Okay, I'm at the lower strut in 21 area. That's perfect. We'll be following along in your HECAs. Just a couple quick cautions. No sudden movements on the mast canister and uh, no big lateral loads. Maximum load is 50 pounds. Avoid cyclic loading and don't import, force, don't import forces into the mod kit until we've got those collar bolts tightened. Yeah, pull that MLI back a little more, Chris, so I can get better eyes on the bolt. Okay, I'm going to peel off. Okay, I see uh, how about that. Okay, do you have a good heck of you, Vina? Uh, I don't see a gap between the uh, shut and then the uh, spherical bearing. Shut, spherical bearing does not have any gap. Okay, we copy a good gap check. You have a good heck of you. We're okay. You see that? Taking view? a look now. Yeah. Give us just a couple of moments to analyze. Okay. All right, Koichi, we are definitely happy with that gap check. We'll have you also perform a wiggle test. Copy that, beam work. Perfect. And just a reminder, we're looking for uh, if they move, that the bolt and bolt canister move together, and if they move, that the bearing and strut move together. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see any movement from here. Uh, I didn't see that either. Let me push it. Okay, it's a little bit, 
sister both care to move together and then the shut in the circle very move together. I see that movement. We Did copy all Koichi. We do see that. That sounds like a good check for us. We're just verifying with all of the uh, interested parties. Okay. So some good news here in Mission Control. Our spacewalkers performed both a gap check and a wiggle check. Okay, the gap check making sure that, that the items that they've installed lay flush and are not angled in any way, misaligned. They've also done the wiggle test to confirm that the bolt and the bolt canister and the bearing and the strut move together. We had troubleshooting options that the team has worked on this week in the event that either the gap or the wiggle check uh, one or the other didn't work, but f according to our spacewalkers, both okay. the gap and the wiggle tests are good. The strut is fully installed. Copy, Duke. I'm going to install the uh, MLA cover and then give you the A4. No problem, Koichi. Can I work to get the strut back on my uh, BRT? And Duke A-Firm, you can get the mid and put it on your BRT. So this is some good news. The lower strut is installed and installed properly. However, the work is not entirely done on it. In order to get to this bolt that they had the questions on, they had to take off some multi-layer insulation. And now they're just going to work to put that back on. This, of course, protects the hardware from the rough environment of space. A big picture update for you both for your SA. We are currently 30 minutes ahead of the timeline, so amazing work there. And our limiting consumables with Medox put us at a PET of about 725. Copy, good news. Copy that. Yes, guys, it looks good to you. This uh, MRI, from this side, it looks like it's uh, covering. Uh, yeah, the lower shot, is this, this side already covered? No, that side is not covered. Is that right? I don't okay. know if they, um, if they will fold it, but fold out a little bit. There you go, yeah. Just one more little fold. Just that corner that your finger's on now. Okay. There you go, yeah. Okay. Is that covered? That covers it, yeah. Okay, great. Is it still covered? Yeah, that looks, looks really okay, good. Okay, great. Okay. And Zina, are you happy with the uh, MRI here on the lower shot at N21? We are indeed. We're happy with that MOI on M21, and we'll take a glove, hat, and gauntlet check from you. Okay, uh, love is good, and yeah, happy is the baseline. Copy, Koichi, and check that your gauntlets are down as well. Gauntlets are still down. And the first task of the day is now complete already. They, the spacewalk began at 6.45 a.m. Central Time. They headed out to their work site on the 1A power channel where they found this support structure. They had built it during their previous EVA earlier this month, but they still had a couple of items left on their to-do list, including checking out one of the bolts on this lower strut. They did two tests on it, a gap check and a wiggle check, and right on the first try, both of them were successful. So now they're moving on to their next task, which is completely installed the mid strut. So if you'll remember, they had already begun work on the lower strut and they just needed to do one more evaluation, but they do need to completely install the mid strut. That's what they're working on now. Perfect, Duke. You can head to the APFR, you'll extend the ingress aid and ingress the APFR. So you just heard Zena Cardman let our spacewalker here in the red suit, the, excuse me, the suit with the red stripes, Nicole Mans ingress the APFR. Good news, EV2, you can head to the cable bag 
and you'll grab the TBA bag from that cable bag, stow it on your mini workstation, and then translate to the left side pad install. Okay. So what exactly is this APFR? Well, it stands for Articulating Portable Foot Restraint. It's essentially a foothold that can be installed at a workstation. You can imagine that working in microgravity, it can be difficult not to float around while you're working with your tools. And the foot restraint holds um, keep the spacewalker in place. It really frees up their hands as well. Sometimes a foot restraint is installed to the end of the robotic arm, and the astronaut can be driven around to different work sites, sometimes carrying bulky items. The robotic arm won't be used in today's spacewalk, but they'll use foot restraints in this area that were already set up for them at their work site earlier this month. Local to the ingress site. Copy, Duke. Copy, Duke. Uh, should I uh, forego the uh, GoPro? I mean, if you, if you want to put it on the handrail, right? Right there, you can right now. Okay, I'll put it in there. We are now one hour into our spacewalk today. We are now in an orbital night time here aboard the International Space Station. You see that glowing line there. That's actually the Earth. And what are our spacewalkers up to? Well, our EV-1, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, is getting into her APFR, or portable foot restraint. Kind of holds her in place at her workstation so she can begin installation on the mid-strut. Meanwhile, NASA, excuse me, Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata is stowing the cable bag that he brought out earlier. Gina, um, can you confirm the APFR settings? I think we had adjusted them before we had left, so um, I will oh, but I think I need a, a roll of hotel. Checking, Duke. Duke, that's a roll of Hotel Yaw 12. Okay, that's a roll of Hotel and a Yaw of 12. Heads up, quick handover in about 10 seconds. We're in a brief handover period as we work to regain communication with our satellites, both video and audio. For now, you have live views of Mission Control Houston, where teams are supporting the, a spacewalk outside of the International Space Station with NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata. They're finishing up work that they started on during a previous EVA back in January. 
They're installing a modification kit or a support structure that will one day house a roll-out solar array. They've already completed their first task of the day and are slightly ahead of schedule. Okay, copy. And you've got the GoPro set up on 2230? Yes. Copy. That's great. Okay, on your way out to the side pad location, reminder to fair lead on S5 handrail 2108. That's a long horizontal handrail just below the mass canister, basically two handrails further outboard from 2230. This 1A power channel mod kit this mod kit launched on Northrop Grumman's 18th commercial resupply services mission, and Cygnus delivered them back in November. While our spacewalkers are getting ready to start work installing the mid-strut portion, the last piece of the puzzle for this support structure that they're building today in this part two of a spacewalk, if you have any questions about today's operation, be sure to submit them using hashtag AskNASA, and we'll try to answer them on air. Nicole Mann is now in position, successfully inside of her portable foot restraints at the work site. Kuichi Wakata is configuring his tethers and equipment that he brought out, making sure it's out of the way but still within reach, and then he'll begin work on it as well. Okay, then let me go uh, behind there. 
Heel down. Okay. Left toe in, push it in. This view that we're looking at now is what they're working on. This is the mod kit or support structure that will one day house IROSAs or ISS rollout solar arrays. Left toe in further. Okay. Now left heel down. Okay. Further down. Further down. The round part that you're seeing there is the mast canister, and that's what they need to install the mid strut to. During part one of this spacewalk, one of the plates that's at the end of the mast, excuse me, that's at the end of the mid strut, didn't quite sit flush against the mast canister. There were um, some components in the way, perhaps some ins insulation. So the ground team has worked all week on some troubleshooting measures, and Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann are working on those now. Okay, my safety is doing good cupcake. The white covering that you see on these struts, that's the MLI, the multi-layer insulation. They're working to peel that back so they have a good view of the work site. Copy, Duke. Great work. Okay. We'll also have you remove the locking pit pin from the mid strut. That's the uh, TDA bag at the, uh, the mid position of the wine glass of the, the handrail, the vertical handrail. Copy, Koichi. That's a great spot for that TBA bag. We can get to work on that side yes. pad interface. You'll clear the MLI from the GSE Copy fixtures that. on the left and right side. And Duke, for that pit pin, once you've got that removed, check that the washer is behind the detents. Okay, the washer is behind the detents. Perfect. You can extend the mid strut, and once Koichi's in place, you'll work with him. You just heard NASA astronaut Zena Cardman give Nicole Mann the okay to extend the, mat, also the mid strut. Also, for you, that MLI first. Yeah, we'll have Koichi working on the MLI. Duke, you can help him by reporting when the MLI is clear of the side pad side slots. Okay. 
So this mid-strut is telescopic, meaning it can be extended out like a telescope. So it does have some tolerance during installation. Mid-strut reminder, you can also lock out your rep with slack in order to avoid any additional side loads. Okay. Uh, I think uh, it's uh, kind of difficult to uh, sail these down along the uh, handrail, but I think uh, now it's uh, not uh, in the way for uh, Duke, so I'm going to continue with this uh, safety data config. Okay, yeah, I see it's this side of the cable bag. When I head down there, I'll, uh, I'll remind me when I head down, Zena, I'm going to have to move his safety center. Copy you both. Koichi will be watching in your HECA okay. view and just give us words once you've got okay. the right side and the left side GSC pad clear of the MLI and the Velcro reengaged. Okay. Copy that. I'm going to start with the right side, following the uh, text of the video that you together. We'll all be so, uh, humming a song well, down here. <laughs> Copy. Oh, yeah. Actually, you are speaking of hearing. I see this uh, MLI some um, because of the uh, interference. So to recap where we're at now, our spacewalkers, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann, are starting to install the mid-strut, the last piece that they need to install to complete the support structure needed for a, a future solar array. Right now they're working on peeling back the layers of multi-layer insulation so that they have a good view of the work site. Stunning in our view. Great work. We'll have you work on the left side as well. And okay. just a reminder about that uh, grounding right strap. Is obviously, uh, left side has enough uh, is, uh, as far as the distance from the, the receptacle bracket, but the, the, as you mentioned, that they need to have some slack at the top of this area, so I'm going to relocate a little bit. Copy, Koichi. As as this, uh, and yeah, as long as that MLI yeah, as as is fully clear of the slot, we're happy. Wakata has successfully removed the multi-layer insulation on the right side and is working on the left side. Okay, it looks like uh, first it clears. I think I have enough clears the MLI to the bracket. You think you I think it looks good. Okay. All right. With that, then I will uh, try to attach the sight pad. Do you agree, Tina? I do agree. We are ready for that side pad. Okay. Okay. And once you receive it from Duke, and okay, pad. Duke has her ret locked out, we'll take some inspections of the tape side deep tape on the side detents. Reminder, Kweeki, that the ret locking is at your end, so I'll have to ask them a little further to you. Okay, right that. And I'm going to push those uh, plungers once again before I install it. Now with that multi-layer insulation out of the way, With the multi-layer insulation now out of the way, they're going to move on to the troubleshooting measures. They had attempted to install this mid-strut during their previous spacewalk, but ran into some issues getting it flush up against that mast canister. 
So now they're going to try some of the fixes that the ground came up with. Right, right. Yeah, there's some boxes on your end. Yeah, I can, yeah. But we, we, we can leave it now, right? We're going to walk out. Yeah, okay, that's right, right. Okay, it's locked. Okay, see ya. All right, Thunder is uh, reset. Copy. All right. And yeah, just make sure you have enough slack in that ret before you locked it out. Yes. There's a lot of slack, yeah. Yes. Perfect. All right, here we go. They're getting ready to install the first side, that's the far side or the topmost part of your screen to the mass canister. The mass canister is that big cylindrical bit that you see on your screen there. Koichi, Koichi Wakata is taking lead on the install of this side of the mass of the mass canister. And hey, Koichi, from our view, it looks like maybe it is pitched toward you a little bit, so that the bottom detent is engaged, but the top detent is not quite engaged. We can also install that adjustable to help and just give it a little. Okay, let me try that. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's coming off now. All right. Okay. You recommend uh, using the adjustable at this side? I do, yes. Okay, I'll try that. They're in the process of installing one side of the mid strut to the mast canister. It's laying flush and is good. And now they're working on soft docking it, which appears to be successful. So in a soft dock, you get everything lined up and flush yeah, before they're able to hard dock or drive the bolts into it. Install your BRT on that vertical handrail there, and that way you can get two hands on the side pad if you need. Actually, actually I already have BRT. Copy. And it's, uh, yeah, I've been using that. It's already tightened, but still, it does uh, give me a uh, stable enough condition that they'll try. Adjustable is attached to the long hand rail and I'm sinking it down. Copy, and, and then, you'll uh, need the right side to be that. engaged as you're cinching the left side. Copy that. Hey Duke, let's try that again. Okay. Oh. It looks like it's partially engaged and it's already fully cinched. Okay, copy. The right so, side is engaged and the adjustable is cinched. It looks like the right side is not engaged if it's coming off that far. And from the view that I have, it does still look like the top detent is not engaging. You've got a view now of the mast canister, okay. and in the middle of the screen, that pole that you see there is the mid strut that they're trying to install. You see the plate at the very end of the mid strut? That's what they're trying to lay flush up against. I'm going to 
if you click go the uh, adjustable, so this side is free end. Uh, okay, free. I'm holding on to it. Yeah, okay, that's great. And then, uh, They're doing a number of troubleshooting measures now here in Mission Control, relaying them to the crew. One is to move around the multi-layer insulation, which you just saw the pair of hands doing there. Okay, copy, Koichi. Okay, I have your key, and then it's tightened. side pad yet. Do right. And side pad. Luigi, once right. you do reattach it, we recommend putting that adjustable with both hooks to the tether loop on the side pad. Otherwise, you won't get enough slack out of that adjustable in order to really cinch it tight. Uh, copy that. Okay, looks like it's uh, our uh, right side is engaged, looks like. Copy. And we're doing really well on time, so if you want to take any moments to readjust your BRT or anything, I wonder if you take your BRT and come at that handrail from the left side instead of the right side. It'll help you get in a better position. Left side or from the right side? Uh... Yeah, see how your, uh, the jaws of your BRT are coming from the right to the left? to that handrail, if you come from the opposite direction, it may get you in a better position for the left side detents. Oh, okay. So 180 out from this position? Yeah, correct. But I'll leave it to your hands okay. on expertise since you are actually there. Okay, okay. Okay. That will not work, so I'm going to change 90 degrees out. Copy, Koichi. All right. I will relocate the adjustable with my red. Following the part one of the spacewalk on January 20th, ground teams here in Mission Control were able to come up with a number of troubleshooting items for this mid-strut. This includes uh, using tethers or various tools at their disposal to help get this mid-strut installed. They've got a checklist of things that they can move down, trying one after the other, if necessary, until the soft dock is complete. And pulling on it in order to get kind of an up and down wiggle motion on the left side while keeping tension on the right side without taking okay. it around the handrail. Yeah, I'm, right, that's what I'm doing now, and then, like it doesn't go in. Copy. Well, 
looks like it's the uh, right side seems to be actually engaged or completely engaged, but the left side doesn't go in. The pond there doesn't go in. Okay, Koichi. Let's have you take the adjustable, the other end of that hook, bring it back to the side pad tether loop. Okay. Get it cinched so that the right side that. stays engaged, and then we'll try the hammer. It's hammer time. Copy that. Okay, I uh, yeah, touch the uh, adjustable. Moving on to the next tool at their disposal, um, some of the troubleshooting items here. They used a, a adjustable equipment tether on the handrail to try to get that into place. Um, now we're moving on to using one of the hammers that they have in their toolbox. Okay, I'll use the hammer then. You can see Wakata reaching for his hammer now. Yeah, that's good word for me both, and it's really looking like that top detent is just not going in, so I think that's a good place to start. Koichi, once you've got that hammer okay. and you're tethered to the hammer, just a reminder, we'll start with some gentle taps. The maximum load on the BGA is 50 pounds and wait 30 seconds between attempts. Copy. You'll also avoid the bolt heads as you hammer. Okay, so I'm not going to release the wrench from the hammer, just to keep it in the TVA bag. Sounds good to me. Okay, and then uh, tap every 30 seconds. Maximum 50 pounds. Okay, uh, flight one, like. Hit, but there's no change. Okay, so about, about 30 seconds. Okay. And just cool. a reminder, you'll Once want to okay. hammer kind of right where the tip of that arrow is. You're aiming for that upper detent. Okay, copy that. You're seeing the point of view of Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata on a spacewalk to install a support structure to hold solar arrays one day. He's working on the mid strut. It's the thing you see in your upper rightmost corner of your screen. That's the insula insulation there. As well, sometimes underneath his hammer, you'll see something with an arrow that is what he's trying to soft dock with the mass canister. You can see he's tried a number of troubleshooting items. There's a tether in place there, kind of pulling it into place. And now he's using his hammer to try to get into place as well. Okay. It went in a little bit. The goal here is for the mid strut to lay flush and soft dock so that the bolts can be driven and it can stay locked into place. Okay. Looks like the lower side is more engaging. The upper side did not go in. Should I uh, hit the lower side again or should I hit the uh, upper side on the arrow? Sounds like we're making some good progress. We might try alternating between the two, see if you can get any more progress on the upper. Okay, copy. Good work. Okay. 
Wakata is relaying what he's seeing down to the crew here in Mission Control. EVA teams in Mission Control are consulting on what to do next and how best to soft dock the piece of equipment that he's working to get into place. Upper side, upper side doesn't go in. Yeah, it seems to me that I need to use the uh, pliers. Okay, copy, Koichi, we'll have you try the pliers. Okay, copy. And, yeah, big picture, we want, as you're looking at the side pad, a little bit of gentle rolling motion as you're trying to wiggle it on, just see if you can kind of walk those detents in place. And so, if needed, we can have Duke from her end do a pitch, so body up and down from her end as you're trying to work the detents in place. Okay, yeah, that would be helpful. Uh, did you do the pitch? Is that not the, the, the I would say, so make this uh, side pad go this way. You know what I mean? So from, that would be a yaw yeah from my perspective. Uh, uh, so your body is kind of offset, but the, that's not the, that's the yaw, but the, no, that's not the, the orientation. Uh, here's the, uh, uh, the rod in this orientation. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the. Koichi Wakata trying a number of items to get this mid strut installed and soft dock to the mass canister. He's used some tethers to help pull, kind of pull it into place. He's used his hammer to also try to, to get it flush there as well, which made some progress. But now he's going to move on to using some pliers that he has out there at his disposal. You can see them on your screen now. Now I'm pointing at. I do see it. Yes. Okay, I'm pointing. Okay. Fire and the, because of this gap on this side, the left side doesn't have any gap, so it's really tight on the left side where I'm pointing at now. It seems to be that uh, somehow the right side needs to engage further to the left because there's some gap here. I see what you mean. Okay. Checking, Koichi. It seems to me that uh, we may need to use a hammer to hit on this right side so that uh, this side pad will shift to my left. Copy, Koichi. Let's think on that for just a second. Is it vertically oriented? Uh, in the middle of that GSE pad? Like, is it able to slide down at all? Maybe it's interfering with the top of the slot where the tongue is supposed to fit in. what you're pointing at is where you will want to tap gently with the hammer. Okay. 
And Duke, we can have you let go of your end as well to alleviate any side loads that may be imparted. Koichi, while you're tapping with the hammer, you'll try to push in on the left side as well. You can see that silver box there at the center of your screen. That's a piece of equipment that they're trying to lay flush against the mass canister. The DRT is tightened down as you can. You could use your mini workstation end effector maybe if that helps you, but you'll need something to react against so that you can be pushing on the left side. Yes, DRT tightened and then the mini workstation end effector is attached, so I will try that again. Okay, I will tap again in this direction. Copy, Koichi. Yeah, and it may be just ever so slightly too high vertically on the GSE pad. So as you're pushing in, also try to push a little bit down. And we've got a handover coming up in about 15 seconds. Okay, so the RT will tighten. So we've got live views here of mission control. You can see towards the left side of the aisle, the gentleman standing in the vest, that's Keith Johnson. He's our lead spacewalk officer for this operation. He's consulting with that team of experts there on what they're seeing on the equipment while also hearing what Koichi is relaying that he can see through his eyes and trying to determine a best step forward. You can see this group in a bit of a huddle now. Kuichi Wakata is relaying what he's trying and what he's seeing to this team here, and they're giving recommendations on on the next moves. So, uh, yeah, I uh, hit the uh, on the right side, but also it does not move at all. So let me try this. The fire two again. Hmm. We're back with live views now at the International Space Station. Okay, we've got your heck of you back, Koichi. And I know it's going to be tricky okay. needing to use your left hand to react to the forces, but as you're pushing that detent, you also need to push in on the side pad so that it's going into the GSE pad on the mass canister. Okay. Hey. I want to in, and I have BRT, and then I mean, we're facing an effector. It's really difficult because I have the force of pushing this in, in the direction. Yeah, definitely understand. So, uh, you need a third hand, basically. Yeah. yeah, hammering from the right side did not work. And then, uh, this is. This. I think the is, uh, is pushed, so it's not the tent that is preventing this coming in. I'm going to try the detent on the bottom side as well.
Yeah, it looks like Dina, the right side is uh, probably engaged in a proper position. Copy, Kuichi. Stand by. Okay. All right, Koichi, we are talking it down here. If we could get your best big picture summary of what you think is going on, what might be interfering, whether it's the side pad itself, if it's the detents, and I think you got that bottom detent engaged before. Is that correct? I, no, it's not very positive. I don't think it was uh, engaged. It seems to me that the detent is not uh, interfering. Just the uh, the width of the uh, the width of the side pad uh, may not be big enough. And then, uh, so uh, I'm still not hundred percent sure if uh, the detents are you know preventing from this uh, installation or not. Okay, copy. I, I you, the, uh, do you think the lip of the side uh, pad is actually hitting the GSE side pad structure? Uh, see, that's also a negative. Looks like it's, uh, you know, uh, this left side, the lip is already engaged on the right, on the left side of this uh, structure, so. Um, so interference uh, seems to me that it's probably the detent, like from here, but the detent, even if I push it down, it does not, even if I push down the detent, still, it does not engage. Is it possible to uh, tighten M1 and M4? Checking, Guigi. I may, uh, I may give uh, more room for M1 and M3 to engage. Well, this time, can I uh, engage M1 and M3 with the uh, M-type with the MS2? Yeah, Kuichi, we do not recommend that. We'll not start engaging any bolts okay. until we have those detents in place. Copy that. Copy that. So, uh, any other actions that I can take? Kuichi Wakata reporting what he can see, what he has tried, as well as giving his own recommendations to the crew here in Mission Control. They're weighing their options and talking as a group and sending some recommendations up, up his way. Can I, uh, uh, Dina, can I release it? And to see what kind of interference especially I can see. Maybe I can uh, answer some of the questions that you have. Yeah, we like that idea, Koichi. Let's have you do that, and we'll be talking some solutions okay. here on the ground. Okay, copy that. Then I'm going to uh, loosen the adjustable. 
And then uh, you got the sight pad, see what kind of interference it has. And I received the squad and adjustable from the... Can you need to hold on to it, Creepy? Uh, it's okay, you can, yeah, that's uh, likely... <laughs> The view you're getting now is the spacesuit with the red stripes is NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. She's holding the other end of the mid-strut while Koichi's working on that that gray square, working it to get flush against the mass canister. It just goes in. Scratch this where the detents go to. So detents are obviously interfering. So it seems to me that they can uh, Copy. Uh, releasing the defense, uh, pushing the defense, defense is the way to go. And then looking at the side pad side, I don't see any interference on this side. So, like it's the, it is the, it can't. And then, uh, I guess uh, we need to. Uh, I need to stabilize my body position and then uh, apply a stable force for the uh, plunger, and then try that. But we have a different. Uh, and can you tend it now? The mixture. Yeah, give me a second. Okay. Uh, If you're just joining us this morning, two astronauts are out on a spacewalk to complete installation of a mod kit or mounting bracket for future solar arrays. They completed, they started work on this back on January 20th, and they're back out for their second spacewalk to complete their work. Um, the first time around, this mid strut that they're working on now gave them a little bit of trouble. So now they're back for a part two to try to get that into place. Teams here in Mission Control are looking at the hardware now. They have an exact model of the hardware and are taking what Koichi Wakata is saying and seeing and feeling with his hands to try to come up with a solution. He has a number of tools at his disposal that he may be able to use. He may also be able to elicit the help of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, who's holding on to the other side. It is a pretty tight workspace, so mission control teams are still determining the next steps. I think I need just three hands to do that. So, Dina, you agree? If you come in here, on the, you know, on the lower side on the long handrail, and the she, she can either work on the uh, pliers while I push in.
Yeah, checking on that, Koichi. Okay, before we have Duke come over, we do like the suggestion to have Duke do a yawing motion from her perspective as Koichi is ideally depressing both of those detents with both pliers. And you want me to kind of wiggle it back and forth or a steady pressure in, one, in the... I think a steady, yeah. gentle pressure from you. If you can get the yawing motion heading to your body left, eventually the strut will hit a yeah. pin on the side pad, and that way you'll be able to actually apply pressure as opposed to uh, before you hit that pin, it'll be rotating around. Yeah, I'd like to okay. see that hard stop there. And Peter, it's difficult to use two uh, pliers at the same time. Yeah, copy, Koichi. We could have you depress both with your fingers and try to get them depressed as much as possible and then see if we can get it installed okay. before the detents pop back out and stretching the tape. Okay, copy that. Then I will, okay. I will disengage this first, then the side pad. We're in a split screen view now, both spacewalkers working together. So you can visualize this mid strut as this long telescoping pole. So it can um, extend or retract as needed. Um, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is holding one end of this pole, while Koichi Wakata is holding the other. His view on the right side there, Wakata trying to get that piece that he's holding in his hands flush up against with that rectangle out on the mast canister. Nicole Mann is now going to work with him, kind of twisting and wiggling from her end to try to snap it into place as well. Meanwhile, here in Mission Control, we've got models of the exact equipment that they're using here in Mission Control being looked at for possible solutions as well. Checking. Hang on. Which one is not? The lower side is staying, uh, I would say. And if, it's, uh, if you flip, it's going to be the upper side. The upper side will stay, and the lower side, the tape is uh, almost damaged, so it doesn't stay. Okay, copy, Koichi. Thanks. Stand by. We're talking plans here. We're now about two hours into this spacewalk, estimated to last about seven hours. They've already completed their first task of the day of doing some inspections on the on the lower strut, and now they're working on installation of the mid strut. To get those detents more depressed, do you think you're able to hold one end of the tape 
so the non-loop end, okay. kind of keep some pressure on it with your thumb, and then peel up yeah. the other end slightly, add a little more depression to that detent, okay. and then reinstall the tape with a little bit more tension. Okay, I think it's uh, possible unless the tape breaks off. Copy. Want me to try that out? Can I you have a go to do that? A firm, Koichi. Okay, it work. And you may want to pinch the other end with your thumb uh, com coming at it from a slightly different direction. Oh. oh. <laughs> we see the tape broke. Copy. Oh, the tape came up. Yeah. You can broke. get that in your right. uh, trash bag. Yes, I can. But oh, you don't want to use this tape anymore. Is that correct? Checking, Koichi. If you think there might still be enough sticky on that length of tape that you pulled off in order to reapply with a little more tension over that detent, you can give that a try. Let me try that. Astronaut Koichi Wakata working with tape in an effort to get that piece in his hands flush with the rectangle on the mass canister there. He's trying to soft dock them, and tape is just one of the many tools he's using to get that into place. Unfortunately, a bit of the tape has come off, but he has an additional roll of tape there in his tool bag if needed. But if he thinks he can use the existing piece, uh, Mission Control has relayed that that's okay too. While this installation is giving Koichi Wakata a little bit of trouble, teams here in Mission Control just relayed that even though we're at the two-hour mark, there's still plenty of time left in this spacewalk to troubleshoot and plenty of ideas still left to try. They remain optimistic about this installation. Thank 
keeping the plungers in place. Yeah. I cannot think uh, any better option than that now. We're following along, guys, and talking it on the ground here. Stand by. Okay. Happy. teams here in Mission Control are troubleshooting this mid-strut, debating on bringing Nicole Mann over to the work site, or perhaps suggesting Koichi Wakata use some of the tools, a plier or some hammers or the tape at his disposal to try a couple of things before she comes over. Okay, guys, we are talking a plan to have Duke come over to you. In the meantime, we'll have you do one more try with Koichi just in place there. What we'll have you do, Koichi, is get in a, as good a body position as you can. You'll engage the right side of the side pad so that that tongue is in the groove. You'll install the adjustable on that handrail just to keep the side pad in place as best you can. And then we're going to use the pliers handle as kind of a pry bar, and I'll be talking you through that in just a moment. Okay, I understand that the, the last portion, uh, I didn't understand, you're gonna use the uh, uh, pliers? Yeah, basically get it installed as best you can You'll take that adjustable around the handrail right. and back to the tether point, and then I'll have some more okay. words for you in a moment. Okay, copy that didn't work. Okay, then I already sensed, adjustable is cinched in place. Okay, stand by, Koichi, we're talking one more thing here. Okay.
that you. Okay, Gucci, we're going to have you grab the pliers. Okay. And insert the pliers into the tether point toward the mass into canister. The tether point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so gently okay. go through the hole of the tether point. Okay. Kind of aiming between. Okay. Yeah, not too far. You want the bottom end of the pliers to just be touching the metal of the side pad. And now you're going to yaw okay. to your left. Okay. Bringing the pliers toward the handrail that your left hand is on and use it as a pry bar. You may want to okay. take the pliers and go 90 degrees off from where you are, rotate them 90. Okay. Yeah, exactly, so that you're not using the bent portion of okay. the pliers. Have a straight face going there. Right. Yep. Okay and apply a gentle, steady okay. pressure. And I'm seeing a much bigger gap than before up top, so I think that detent is not even starting to engage on the top side. I think it is, it's a, trash bag, Kuichi. That's Zena Cardman on your screen. She's the voice that you hear communicating with the crew. Copy. We agree. Stand by. Kuichi Wakata just attempted to use his pliers, kind of repurposing it as a, as a way to plow the other side of it back into place. Unfortunately, the force was a little too much for the pliers and they snapped. So Koichi fortunately has a trash bag up there with him and the crew is just making sure that he doesn't touch any of the sharp edges as we don't want to cause any damage to the spacesuits. And now we're working on another solution. Talking a plan down here, guys. Thanks for your patience.
Moving on now to the next troubleshooting option, having NASA astronaut Nicole Mann move Got over. One more try before we have Duke come over to where Koichi is. We'll have her do that yawing motion, so going to her body left with her end of the strut. And then Koichi on your end. If you can get in as good a body position as possible, stay stable and use the pliers. You'll need both the needle nose pliers and the taped pliers. And we want you to be depressing both of those detents at the same time while Duke is doing her yawing motion. Okay. And Zena for EV1, PCD at one. PCD at one, copy. The needle nose are below your right, uh, like below your PCT. Okay. Now they're underneath your mini workstation. They're just floating. They're not tangled. So they're kind of on your left side. Okay. Looks like NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is going to stay put as they try one more thing. She's holding the other end of this mid-strut. If you look towards the top of your screen, you can see that one of her feet is inside of her portable foot restraint. So if she were to come over to Koichi, she would need to egress that. And then Mission Control has the path forward that they would like her to take, only if we reach that step. So, Zina, you bet uh, I use the uh, needle nose uh, in place of uh, one of the pliers, right? Exactly. And DRT and MA work system and the vector locked. Copy, Koichi. It's a blood operation on one side. I can see one side clearly, but the, uh, that doesn't allow me to look at the bottom side. But uh, I think I can feel the plunger with the needle nose. Okay, copy. If you're getting some good tactile feedback as best you can, that's the right move. Good. And I will have a better positioning of the tools. Let me know when I can yaw some more. Okay, just a moment. Duke, for you, if we could have you hold the bolt canister rather than the bolt. Thank you. Okay, I can do the... Uh... I can feel the detent on the upper side, but it's hard to see the detent on the left okay, side. Okay, and I'm, and I'm young left. Okay, uh, let me, uh, first let me handle the, the broken wires that I don't take them to use that one. Zina, uh, uh, what's the uh, plan with the, uh, the damaged flyers? Uh, just uh, leave it outside. It's uh, still taped, it's uh, connected, so it doesn't go anywhere. But Copy, yeah, we're concerned about a sharp edge there, so we just want it to be out of the way and be careful not to grab that end of the pliers, but understand it won't fit in your trash bag. Right. I'm going to put it in partially in the trash bag so I don't accidentally touch it. Copy. Sounds like and a good plan. And then I'm going to grab the other flyer. 
Okay. Good plan. I grab the other play. Okay. recap a little bit of what's going on. Uh, we're doing a lot of troubleshooting on how to get that mid strut installed. It's part of this greater installation for this mod kit or support structure that they've started building back in January 20th to the outside of the space station. One of the maneuvers that they had attempted was to use his pliers kind of like a crowbar sort of to just kind of nudge that rectangle that he's working on into place. Unfortunately it resulted in some broken pliers. It's very critical that our spacewalker Koichi Wakata does not touch any kind of sharp edge, so he has been working with Mission Control on how to properly stow that away into safety. Okay, understand Koichi. I think that's okay. No problem if you don't have both eyes on, but if you feel that the pliers are in the right spot, then I think we're good to give this a try. And do Duke, for you, we'll have you continue that slow, steady yawing motion. You may also do a gentle jostle in the pitch direction as you're continuing to apply a steady yaw pressure. Copy. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. You heard our ground IV Zena Cardman talking to Duke, okay, so the call sign for no, Nicole no, Mann, no, our EV1 no, no, today. With a round of applause here in Mission Control and the okay, teamwork of Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata, they finally got the piece they've been working on to lay flush and soft docked. So you can think of this mid strut that they're working on as, as a bit of a pole shaped item with Nicole Mann on one side and Koichi Wakata on the other. And you are going to start with M1 and M3. You'll want to be very gentle as you do this, minimizing any side loads because it is liable to pop off again. You'll be driving M1 and M3 approximately two turns being extra cautious for cross-threading. Copy that. I have the tool in the starting with M1. Two turns. Copy, Koichi. The solution that seemed to do the trick, um, as I was explaining, this is a, a cylindrical shaped item with an astronaut on either side of it. Uh, you're seeing the view of Koichi Wakata now working with that silver box that he's been trying to lay flush against the mass canister. Nicole Mann was on the other side and with their teamwork she was able to take her side and kind of nudge it, wiggle it into place from her perspective while Koichi laid it flat. And that was a solution that seemed to work. And hey, Duke, for you, a heads up, we're getting ready for a night pass, and I know you have your TCV in one, but if you want to do some wiggling and get warm, that's fine by us. I'm going to go to M48, is that correct? Hey, Firm Duke. M1 and M3, two turns each complete. This is great news. Two turns on M1 and M3. We've got lots of happy people down here. Okay, you'll be getting your PGT now. Setting Alpha 1 
clockwise one. Koichi Wakata successfully soft dock the mechanism that he's been working on, that mid strut, the thing that you see going from the center of your screen all the way out to the right side. He's now working to drive the bolts into place. Okay, uh, this is the Alpha One, clockwise one set. Copy, Alpha One, clockwise one. You'll that device that you see in Koichi Wakata's hand, we're looking at his point of view now, the thing with the number five on it. That's the PGG, PGT, or the pistol grip tool. It's a battery-powered handheld tool, kind of similar to, to a drill, getting those bolts into place. You could see it in motion now. Engine four turns complete, working on M4. Copy and stand by, Koichi. All right, Koichi, and we'll have you go back to M1 and M3 with two additional turns using the PGT. Okay, and then an M3, two additional turns. The numbers that Koichi Wakata and Xena Cardman are communicating from space and here on the ground are the torque and speed settings of this pistol grip tool that he's using in his hands now. Two additional turns complete on M1. On M3. Two additional turns complete on M3. And we're coming up on a handover in five seconds. We're in a handover period here. You're getting live views of Mission Control Houston, where teams just worked to troubleshoot some issues that they were having installing the mid strut, the last piece of the support structure that they've been building for two EVAs now. Okay, now do I continue on M2 or M4? Back with they got the part right into place, and now Koichi Wakata is working on drilling them all into place. Even though we worked on a number of troubleshooting okay, solutions here today, we are not terribly behind schedule. And we're back with our live views as we approach the two hour, 30 minute mark of our spacewalk. Four turns complete on M4. Copy, four turns on M4, and I may have missed it in the handover. Did you get two additional on M1 and M3? That's complete, and then M2, M1 and M3, two additional turns complete. Copy, okay, we have four turns on all four of those bolts. Okay. Duke, for you, you can get L8 to upper strut, the mid strut to the upper strut, L8. 
and you'll be setting your PGT to Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Okay, I've got Bravo 1, clockwise 2 set. Perfect. You'll be driving M28, about six and a half to nine turns, looking for a black line flush. Guichi for you, you'll be driving M1 to M4 to torque. An additional three to eight and a half turns or so. This is to torque, so you're looking for good green light. Okay, uh, three to eight turns on the, all the four volts in the PGT setting the same. PGT settings are alpha two, clockwise two. Alpha 2, clockwise 2, 3 to 8 turns. These directions again being the speed and torque and settings of this pistol grip seven. tool, as well as the direction eight clockwise turns. or counterclockwise. In this case, it will be clockwise. Copy. Then one, I got a green light and torques out, 3.8 pounds, and uh, it's a two and a half turns. Copy, two and a half turns additional on M1 and two foot pounds. Correction, 2.8 foot pounds on M1. Stand by. Okay, thanks, Koichi. Stand by. Okay, we're good. good to have you continue with M2, M3, and M4. Okay, any order? A firm. Okay, copy, thank you. You got a green light, it talks about 3.7 turns, uh, 3.7 foot pounds, 3 turns. Copy, 3 turns and 3.7 foot pounds on M3. On M3, I got a green light, it talks about 3.7 pounds and then two and a three quarter turns. Copy, two and three quarters turns, 3.7 foot pounds on M2. We're checking on that bolt. Hey, M28, I got and nine turns, green light, 11.9 on the torque. Copy, nine turns, 11.9, and green light for you, Duke. That's a good bolt. Koichi, you can continue as well. Okay, copy that. Working on M4. Duke, can you verify also that you've got black line flush? Hey, Tom, step by. Yeah, black line flush. Great news. Okay, you can install the mid -strip grounding kit pin. Green light and torque out to 3.6 foot pounds, three turns. Copy, 3.6 torque and three foot pounds. Koichi, you can stow your PGT as well. And it's so far so good on the installation of this mid strut where it continues tightening the bolts on it. Copy, Duke. Okay, they're good now. And did I uh, verify the grounding pipping is uh, installed firmly on L1? 
Perfect. And grounding the pit of skulls. Copy that, Duke. Koichi, you can release EV-1's rep from the mid-strut handrail once your PGT is stowed. Copy that. First up with that. Unlock the rep. Yeah. That's a good plan. Okay, unlocked. Okay. Can I give it to you now? Yes, sir. I'm ready for it. All right. Maybe it was locked again. Okay. It's unlocked. Here it goes. Okay. Got it. Thanks. All right. Okay, Gina, what's best for me? Next for you, Koichi, you can release the adjustable from the side pad tether point and stow it on your mini workstation and then we'll be doing the MLI install. Copy. Copy. Duke, once you're good, we'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you. So if you remember earlier during our spacewalk, our spacewalkers had worked to remove some of the MLI, the multi-layer insulation. It's that white covering that you see there. And now Koichi Wakata is working to um, install it back over the side pad. Meanwhile, here on the ground, they've asked our spacewalker, Nicole Mann, to perform a HAP and gauntlet check. HAP being the pads that they wear in their helmets to avoid excess moisture. She's going to make sure that that's good and dry, as well as take a look at her gloves, check it out, make sure that there's no notable damage. Okay, you do one glove for good, HAP is dry, don't put her down. Copy all, Duke. And then uh, adjustable is uh, removed from the side pad installed on my mini workstation. Copy, Koichi. We'll take a glove hat and gauntlet for you as well. Okay, glove is good. Hat is dry and gauntlet are in place. Okay, copy all. Hey, Koichi, I'm looking at this left bundle. I don't see where you added. I don't see where you, did you add a wire tie? I see the wire tie that's to the handrail. And the wire tie that's part of the uh, integral to the, that we installed on the bundle. Did you add an additional one? I believe I added an additional one. Do you have a record, Zina? If I had an additional one attached to? Checking. On the previous EDA. Now that the mid strut installation is complete, they're going to move on to tightening the collar bolts. At the midpoint of the mid strut, they're driven to rigidize the whole structure. And when the collar bolts are driven, they clamp down on this locking feature. And that has to be done before an Aeropsa can put weight on them. All right, Koichi, we weren't tracking any wire tie removal, but we see you in a good config. Okay, so I do that I need to remove the or Okay, yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay.
think I'm just uh, tidying it up uh, because of the tools that you need, you need for the site there, then uh, I'm putting them back in the PDA bag. Copy. We see that in your HECA. I think that's a great plan. Once you're done with that, we'll have you work on the MLI on your end, and then we'll be working on the collar. Okay. We're in an orbital nighttime here on the International Space Station. That's why you get kind of a dark look with the, these headlamps that they've got on there as they continue their tasks. To kind of recap what's been done so far, they began their spacewalk at 6.45 a.m. Central. That's Koichi Wakata, whose point of view you're seeing on the right, and Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, on the left side. After exiting the hatch, they went over to their work sites and began work on the lower strut, part of the support structure that could one day hold an IROSA, a rollout solar array. This structure is needed to be built before these solar arrays can be installed. They began work on it back in January and are finishing up. So they began their work on the left strut one of the components that they needed to look at, and then they completely installed the mid strut. They did a couple of troubleshooting items to get them into the proper configuration that they needed, tried a couple of things, and finally got success. And now they're tightening the collar bolts all around the structure, rigidizing the whole thing so it can be load-bearing, essentially can house a rollout solar array. Copy three on your TCV. Okay, Gina, the tools uh, in the TDA bag, uh, I returned them in the TDA bag, and it's still attached to the uh, long handrail. Okay, copy, Koichi. We'll have you also work on the MLI there on your end and make sure that the MLI is going around that bolt. Okay. okay. It's uh, over the bolt. And secured with the uh, integrated wire tie. Copy, Koichi, that looks good to us. Before you need to. 
That'll be the next steps, exactly, Kuichi. Okay, we'll have you adjust your body position to reach the mid-strut collar. And while you're BRT'd to the mid-strut handrail, remember to avoid any torsional loads into the strut. And we'll have PGT settings when you're ready. Copy that. Stand by. Kuichi Wakata now getting into the position to work on those collar bolts. Okay, ready for the PCT settings for M29 and M30. Okay, Kuichi, that's Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Bravo 7 set, clockwise 2 set. Copy, Kuichi. You'll be driving M30 and M29, those are the color bolts, to torque. Expecting oh. about four to six turns. Okay, four to six turns, six turns to torque. And the ground just communicated up to Koichi Wakata what his pistol grip tool settings should be, the torque and speed that he needs to drive these collar bolts. You can get a good view of what we're talking about here on your screen now if you want to take a look. Kind of in the middle of the screen you'll see this gray cylindrical shape. Uh, the one closest to the view is NASA astronaut Nicole Mann holding everything steady. Right in the middle we have our astronaut Kumichi Wakata. He's working in the middle point of this mid strut. That's where these collar bolts are. He needs to drive these in order to rigidize the whole structure so that one day these this structure can hold solar arrays. This mod kit that he's working on launched with Northrop Grumman's 18th Commercial Resupply Services mission delivered by the Cygnus Cargo spacecraft back in November. And the IROSAs that will be attached to this mounting bracket will launch in a SpaceX Cargo Dragon cargo spacecraft during the company's 28th Commercial Resupply Services mission this summer. I got a, on 29, I got a green light that poked out three and a half turns, 25.3. Put down. Copy. Three and a half turns, 25.3 on M29. I'm going to work on this M30. Stand by, Koichi. Okay, Koichi, yes, you can continue with M30.
came 30, got a green light and torqued out. 25.6 foot pounds, four and a half turns. Copy, four and a half turns, 25.6 on M30. Stand by. Okay, Koichi, you can drive M29 to torque, about four to six turns until the MTL pops over. You'll be setting your PGT to manual ratchet. Okay, so uh, manual ratchet and uh, two pops on the M29. A firm. Just as a reminder, since we have the wobble socket, try to keep the PGT as in line as possible and minimize the wobble function of the wobble socket. Copy that. And Duke, are you all set with the uh, cable routing there? I'm all ready to go. Got it. Uh, I got squeaky cup still undone, and I've got it uh, routed to the lower track here. Perfect. Thank you. Two Work continues on this mid strut as Koichi Wakata on your screen now is working towards the middle of the mid strut, tightening these collars to rigidize the structure. The ground just asked Nicole Mann if she's ready to move on to her next step. She's not quite done here over at the mid strut. She still has some work to do um, helping Koichi out with the insulation. Um, it needs to go back on before they're ready to step away from it. But after this task, she'll move on to route some cables. I don't know if you think it would help if I hold your foot. Yeah, let me try that. Try, uh, I think this is tightening. And then that. Uh, let me reorient my body. Okay. We like that suggestion, Koichi. Okay, I got it. 
turns were you able to get? I think it's about uh, about one turn. Roughly one additional turn on M29. Okay, you can go to M30. Okay, working on M30. Level 7 set clockwise. You set. And this will still be in manual ratchet clockwise. When you're hearing words like M29, M30, these, re these refer to the bolts exactly. that Koichi Wakata is working on tightening, and the numbers have to do with his tool settings on just exactly how much he's tightening it. Looking for two pops on M30. Okay. You can set your PGT back to motor and stow it. Thank you, Duke, for your help. All right, good job. I appreciate it. Duke, once Koichi's got his PGT stowed. Give me one second. We're now about three hours into our spacewalk today, moving right down the checklist. Right out of the gate, they moved to work on the lower strut of the structure that they're building and completely installed the mid strut after a lot of troubleshooting back and forth here in Mission Control and up outside the International Space Station. They were able to successfully install that and they moved on to rigidize the structure or tighten the collar bolts in the middle of the mid strut that they just built. So they're still at it there. You can see it on the right side of your screen. Okay, thank you. Next up on their checklist, that's what they're working on now. They're working on the multi-layer insulation. It was peeled back for installation, and now they just need to put it back. This, this insulation helps protect it from the vacuum of space. We're at a brief handover period now, so we're getting live views of Mission Control Houston. You see that bit, Ben? But yes, he'll be... Once you unroll the MLI, you should be able to see it. I already uh, took it out of the touchstone location. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Affirm, and install that pit pin on the telescoping side of the strut. Oh, 
in a small square box near the collar. Okay. I don't see it. Uh, hey, they look up underneath. Underneath the... Uh, Not underneath the envelope. I just come from later and look up. Later, okay. Okay, it's on the other side. Quick hand over here. We'll be back with you in a couple seconds. We expect to get our live views back shortly. Meanwhile, our spacewalkers continue working diligently on getting the insulation back over the mid strut that they had just installed. Next up in their tasks, Nicole Mann is going to rec it's going to route some cables. Um, she's going to send them on a path, uh, making her way around the space station, not necessarily installing the cables, but kind of setting them up for success for a future spacewalk. Right, then I'm going to wrap around here on the color bolt. Back with you after a handover. And Koichi, were you able to get that pit pin installed? I mean, I got the MLI. Yeah, pit pin is installed, and we are working on the MLI. I'm going to hide around boat 28 and we're uh, tightening it up. Perfect. That sounds great. You'll be fully closing it around the telescoping end of the strut and then installing the short wire ties around the MLI. Koichi, for you, you'll translate to the right mid strut, going outboard around the mass canister from long handrail to long handrail. Okay, copy that after I uh, cover the uh, color bolt area in MLI, I will trans. Can I can work on that right MLI, Kariki? Oh, can you work on that? Yeah, because okay. I'm going to pop out here. So, Zena, I think I'm going to get that, go through those wire ties, once I'm allowed to translate on the uh, strut. Be able to get to that MLI a little better. Hey, from Duke. Koichi Wakata has been working on the left mid strut collar. Work is complete on that, and now he's making his way over to the right mid strut to do similar work. And there we have NASA astronaut Nicole Mann in view, uh, nicely lit as we enter an orbital daytime. 
You can see by looking at her feet that she's egressed or gotten off of her portable foot restraint that was keeping her in place as she assisted Koichi Wakata when he was working on the installation of the mid strut. She's now moving on to other tasks. She's making her way over to the cable bag. Uh, it was originally taken out of the airlock and stowed temporarily until they needed it. And that time is now. So she's going to work on some cable routing while Koichi Wakata works on the right side of the mid strut collar. He'd already worked to tighten and rigidize the left side. Duke. I'm just, I got the air scoop, and now I'm coming around. All right. I'm just holding on the outside yep. collar bolt. Uh, they're looking into your suit. Okay. We're with you guys. We're analyzing some EDAR data for you, Koichi. We'll have you uh, just hang out there for a moment. Koichi, can we get a glove inspection, a very thorough glove inspection? Just make sure that there's no damage to your glove. Yeah, gloves, uh, good. Looks good to me. Okay, copy Koichi. Let's have you look in between all of your fingers, just a really thorough inspection. So kind of spread the fingers apart and really get in there. They look good. There's a slight uh, RTV uh, feel uh, on the uh, left index finger, but that's just the uh, RTV. Don't see any damages. Copy, Koichi. Unfortunately, that safety tether goes right through the app. I need to get to the mask canister. Add, uh, you can go over it, right? No, because it's kind of covered up. 
coming up. So I'm going to look and see. Maybe I can come outboard and then come around. And then you need to get to the... Uh... I need to get to the, the side pad, or if you drive those boats, although I'll be able to translate, so that might be a better option. Right, okay. And uh, I'd like to hang out there until I'm done with the other boats. Yeah, guys, we're still looking at some suit data, tracking your call about the safety tether. Duke, are you able to add a fair lead? I did a four man here um, on two two three five. Uh, I'm going to go out forward to see if I can figure something out. Copy, Duke. We don't have video right now, so we're uh, listening to your words. We'll be back with you in a moment. We're in a brief loss of signal. We've temporarily lost our video capabilities, but we expect to have them back very soon. Uh, shortly before we lost video, Koichi Wakata was performing a, a glove check, looking really thoroughly between his fingers to see if he could see any damage. Koichi, for you, we've been looking at the data. We're going to keep analyzing it. For now, we're good to have you continue with your tasks. And we'll be keeping an eye on the Copy data, that. see if we find any additional spikes in that O2 use rate. Okay. So, uh, the color balls on the uh, right strap, mid strap, is that right? Affirm, yep, you'll be opening the MLI on the right mid strut to reveal the collar bolts. And I'll have PGT settings for you okay. when you're ready. Okay, stand by. And then Duke, for you, let us know if we can help you with any fair leading suggestions for the handrail or anything like that. We'll take your words on what okay. path you wind up taking. I got one here on uh, 21108. I think that's going to work. I'm just going to try to here. Copy, Duke. And pretty sure I know the answer, but just to verify, that's Koichi's safety tether on 2108, Duke. Okay, Zina, ready for PGT setting for color balls on the right deep strut. Okay, similar to before, we'll be doing Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Okay, Bravo 7 set, clockwise 2 set. Uh, how many turns? This will be about four to six turns on M25 and M26. Okay, four to six turns. No, I think I'm getting myself in a bad spot here, Zena. I'm going to back out and uh, try a different way. A few minutes ago, Koichi Wakata was working on the right mid strut collar part of his task for the day where he noticed a brief spike in his O2 data. He relayed this information to the ground and we paused all activity as ground teams um, investigated what the cause could be. He did a 
a thorough glove check, and his levels had gone down right away. So during this pause and after some evaluation, our team decided that now that we are back at normal levels and it was a brief spike and the glove check was good, we're going to continue on, but teams are going to continue to monitor the situation. Stand by, Duke. Okay, guys, back with you after a quick handover. And Duke, a firm, you can translate in order to do the safety tether routing that you mentioned. So can I, um, can I use that handrail on the mid strut? A firm, Duke. To put on the wire ties, or do I need to wait? Okay, great, thank you. Okay, uh, for color bolt, get a green light and talk out 25 point zero fifth pounds, and then uh, four and a half turns. Copy, four and a half turns, 25.0 on the torque for M25 and M26. You'll be setting your PGT to manual ratchet clockwise now. Copy. And you're at this set clockwise. Perfect. And now you'll be driving M25 and M26 until you get two MTL pops. Just let us know any additional turns you get. Copy. Koichi Wakata now finishing up, tightening the collar on the right mid strut. You can see him at the very top of your screen, while towards the bottom, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is working on some multi-layer insulation.
We lost your HECA for a moment. If you can hit the power button and turn it back on, that would be helpful. Okay, no problem. Green light for the heck Copy Duke, it'll take us a minute to get it back. We'll get on my uh, first wire right here. Copy. We've momentarily lost heck of views from Nicole Mann. This is the point of view cameras that you've been seeing in our coverage from time to time. She did a simple power cycle to get those back on and we're going to see if the solution worked shortly. Hey, Koichi, just watch your feet on the solar array there. We we'll want to get you in a good body position so okay. that your feet aren't close to contacting. Okay. Copy that. I'll get lower. Okay, I've got one wire tied down, just working on the second now. Copy, Duke. Koichi, for you, body positioning wise, it's helped to be basically on your back. Right, that's uh, why I started and uh, didn't have enough. Uh, so I, yeah, definitely understand. You can also, also put your this, uh, feet right. on the lower strut if that helps you brace yourself. Oh, okay. Lower strut, okay. That's a good suggestion, thank you. Koichi Wakata there at the top of your screen finishing up work as he drives some bolts to tighten up everything on the right mid strut collar. This is one of the final steps needed on this structure that they've been building for the past two spacewalks.
point for reaching? Yes. All right, let me know if I can, uh, I if you want me to come stabilize feet again. I think uh, I'll try this uh, orientation, and if it doesn't work, I will ask you help. Okay. Her point of view cameras are back from Nicole Mann. You can see her putting some wire ties around some multi-layer insulation, this sort of blanket that protects the hardware from the vacuum of space. It's a three quarters of a turn. Perfect, three quarters of a turn, two pops on the upper collar bolt. on the mod kit at this point. Okay, great. And I think I'll go get rid of this uh, square scoop. one of two pops on the lower collar bolt. And Duke, before you depart that area, second pop. copy second pop Koichi. Duke will just have you do a okay. final check of the MLI around those collar bolts, making sure that the MLI is snug and there's no gap around the collar bolts. Okay, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna drop this square scoop and then I'll, when I come back to do the cables, I can tidy up the collar bolt MLI. Copy, we're good with that. And Koichi, okay, we copied two pops for you. Any additional turns on that bolt? It's a half turn. Copy, half a turn. All right, Koichi, for you, you can set your PGT back to motor and stow it and then close the MLI around those collar bolts M25 and M26. For both of you, you can translate on the mod kit now and just make sure to minimize any loads on the mod kit and don't tr translate simultaneously, so deconflict your translations with each other. Okay, I'm uh, here doing the uh, first group, so I won't be moving for a little bit, Koochie. Okay, copy that. Not moving, I'm just uh, folding the... Uh... And another check on their to-do list is complete at the 3 hour 30 minute mark of the spacewalk. Recap some of the events that has happened today. They've been working on this mod kit that you see here. The cylindrical thing here is our mass cam. And then we've got this pyramid type structure. They built like 90% of it during their previous spacewalk back in January. But they wanted to take one more look at the lower strut, the gray that you see on the bottom of your screen, and totally installed this mid strut that you see. In the yellow, you can see the collar. So what they did was troubleshooted the lower strut, installed the mid strut after some troubleshooting with the team here in Mission Control, and tightens that yellow piece, the collar, to rigidize the whole structure to get it ready to be load-bearing or having a IROSA, or the Rollout Solar Array, launching this summer, uh, sitting on it so it can be deployed. They've just wrapped up putting the multi-layer insulation, the sort of protective blanket, back over it. And now they're going to get started on their new tasks. Uh, they've been together, these two spacewalkers, for most of the spacewalk, and they're getting ready to separate. Correct. Yep.
Nicole Mann is going to work on some cable routing. So this refers to connecting the new rollout solar arrays with the legacy arrays. Of course, she's not going to actually install anything. We don't have our IROSA solar arrays there yet, but it does save time on a future spacewalk to have these cables already there routed. All they have to do is plug them in. Can you see if uh, this mid strap uh, or the uh, color bolt uh, penalize uh, wrapped around the color bolt area? Uh, it's still needs to be, if the top part is good, the bottom part needs to come up and around. Bottom part, okay. And once I get over there to my side, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Duke, we see you. Okay, how about now? No, there's still a gap in the back, Can we see like the, um, the integrated ones that are coming up from the bottom. If you could pull them up. Like that. It's just as far as it can go up. Yeah, but the, the one in your, grab it with your left hand, now pull that towards your head. This uh, one? It needs to, like, be flattened out. Does that make sense? I don't think it can go down, though. It's uh, full up here. The bottom flap still has a gap. So if you take the two integrated tether points okay. and pull them apart from each other. How about now? Oh, it's covering it, isn't it? Well, maybe, I don't know, this would be nice. You can see in the HECA how much it needs to cover, but there's still a big gap in the back. Duke, we can't see it in your HECA view, so we'll trust your words to uh, work on that. Okay, so can we see the bottom flap? Yeah. You're, you're, that's the top flap you're touching now. Look at me. Do you, do you see where my hand is? Yes. On the bottom flap? This is it. This Pull is them it. apart like this. Uh -huh. That way it, it, it's crunched up right now. So that one, yes. And then... The other one? Yeah, but you need to pull it down, pulling these apart. The other one I cannot reach. Yeah, uh, your, your right thumb is touching it. Did you see any? Is it... Yeah, your right thumb is, is uh, keep it. touching it. That's it. Yeah, you're, that's the one you're touching. Yep, that's it. So pull that towards your right. I cannot touch it. I cannot uh, grab it. Is it still to my right? It is on top of your thumb now. It's just kind of springing away from you. If you can come up a little higher, I think you'll be able to. Okay, now I see it. Yeah, okay. there you go. Is that so, good? No, so it needs to come to your right. Like, spread them apart. To my right. How about that? That one, okay, don't move. Oh, don't move. The one in your left hand. Okay. The one that was in your left hand needs to go straight and outboard. Which one? Which one? So, if you reach with your left hand, the one you previously had. This one? Yeah. Left, left hand is this one? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, this one, okay. Yeah. Oh. Put it in your right hand. Uh, right hand. Okay, and then push it upwards. Okay, copy yeah. that. Yeah, there you go. Okay, great. Yeah, it needs to come down on the other side of the call board. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Some teamwork going on outside of the International Space Station to get this multi-layer insulation, this protective blanket around the structure that they just built. So we know that after this multi-layer insulation is reinstalled, uh, Nicole Mann is going to make her way over to some cable routing. Meanwhile, Koichi Wakata is going to work on getting a new portable foot restraint. There are a couple of these outside of the International Space Station, and the one that they had been using has been having some trouble with the pitch knob. You can kind of think of these portable foot restraints kind of like a tripod. You have your pitch and you have your yaw. Those are the different directions that you're able to move. And it's the pitch that they were having trouble with. Um, it's not totally unusable. They can use it again, but they prefer to use one that's a little more smooth for future EVAs. So Koichi Wakata is going to go take the sticky one and replace it with one that works a little bit better. It looks like the side the top side of that, so the side that's closest to your head now, has kind of a wrinkle, a fold in it. 
if you can straighten that out, that may help cover more of the metal. I think I recommend you pull, you pull up on the top flap. Okay. Straighten it all out. All right. Let me uh, move it up. Pull, pull, like, pull it away from the, un, undo it, pull it away, straighten it out. And then I think you'll have a better, better rocket getting it around. So this is, I put it out, and then it doesn't rotate more anymore, so okay. is it better now? Is it better now? Do you see my left hand, Kaluki? Yeah, I see it. Take the flop and bring it up like this. Yeah. Undo it so that you can, you got to get everything straightened out. It's like a jumbled mess. And, yeah, Koichi, for you, since you can translate on the mod kit now, you can also move up and try to get up and over so that you're looking down on the MLI, maybe you'll be able to get a better view of what you're what you're doing there. Okay, copy that. So I'll uh, move it around. Yeah, sorry I'm not doing a better job explaining. Oh, that's all right. I will just come up and then I will see if I can do just it. Okay, Vina, I'm going to continue with the uh, cable routing. You can see Nicole Mann at the bottom of your screen working on routing cables. Yeah, we, uh, you can now, I know what you mean. What you mean. The sliding it out, yeah. yeah. Just like here on Earth, we want to have nice and tidy cables. So she's working to get rid of any slack and use wire ties to kind of keep everything together and neat. Koichi, for you, your plus is close to the solar array, so just watch that body position there. I understand that. Yeah, it's kind of contacting part of the solar array, so you'll want to move further toward the mounting bracket. Copy that. Yeah, Luke, I think uh, my high side, I cannot get there. And then the... The top part looks good. It's not just the bottom flap that needs to be flattened out. It'll be from underneath. Right. And the... Uh, somehow on the left side, too, in the middle is kind of open. But I think we cannot avoid it, right? Um, give me a second. So, Dean, I got my safety tether pack tangled here on the APFR. I'm working on this. Copy, Duke. Koichi, if it helps, let's have you add the long wire tie around that MLI and see if we can cinch it shut with the wire tie. So that's the long wire tie that would be used for the FHRC shut tie backs. Okay. Uh, I'll try that. And then, uh, is there still openings here? 
on this side. How much of the opening? It's about a six inch hole. So for the bottom flap is not doing its job. It needs Oh, that was actually really good. Yeah, now if you can squish it together. Yes, you got it. Wonderful. Is it now closed? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, this is good. Now, you got to tighten down the, the tires. When you let go, it pops open a little bit. How about now? Oh, give me a second. Yeah, the other side I cannot see. In the middle, there's an opening, but uh, so it's, it cannot be completely covered. You know what I mean? It comes out. It opens up. Okay, let's take a look. Koichi, we'll have so, you actually start routing the cables, and then once we have those cables routed, we'll come back to the MLI. Okay. Okay. Copy that. Me, I come from the inside. I think this one is good. Yeah, now it's good. Now it's looking good. Okay. Yeah, we see that in your HECA as well. Right, I'm You can see Koichi Wakata at the top of the screen now has cables in his hands. He was working on closing the multi-layer insulation around this structure. He got it pretty good, um, had a couple of issues just fully closing this last piece he was working on. But he's going to come back to that and for the moment help Nicole Mann with the cable routing. The uh, handrail on the mid strut. And Quichi, for your awareness, your uh, HECA in the helmet assembly is loose. Of course, it's still held on with the straps, but just so you know, it's going to be a little bit wobbly. You can see it in work now, wrapping these wire ties around this bundle of cables, keeping everything organized. Duke. And 
not be a Zena on the long strut? Uh, do I need to put it on the station, or can I just uh, do three twists around the uh, handrail? On the handrail is fine. Handrail, okay, copy that. And for a brief handover period, the International Space Station has a number of ways to communicate with the ground, primarily through the tracking and data relay, or TDRS, satellites. When the space station's antennas lose sight of one of them, it creates a loss of signal like we're in now. Uh, but TDRS is a constellation of satellites, meaning there are several of these communication satellites in orbit, and it doesn't take long to connect with another one, so we should have audio and video back shortly, and these outages are planned, and we, we know when they're going to happen opposite side to pick up your TBA bag. Okay, after uh, Duke uh, translates, I will <coughs> translate to the opposite side. Happy Koichi. And actually, before you depart Koichi, we'll have you install that wire tie around the MLI. Okay, so long wire tie. Indeed, the long wire tie around the MLI, and just make sure that we have all of those gaps closed up. Copy that. Okay, I have three twists to the uh, vertical and rail. Copy, Duke. We'll have you guys both working together to do a HECA scan of the final ModKit MLI config and just make sure that all of those gaps are closed, especially after Kuichi installs a wire tie around his. Okay. Do that. Uh, do you have my HECA now? We're getting video back. Stand by one. Okay, Duke, we do have your HECA back. We're ready for that scan. We've got about 30 seconds of video remaining until I hand over. Okay, and Koichi, we'll also get your eyes on Duke's side, and if it looks good to you, we may have Duke head out to uh, One Bravo. Okay. Let me check that. Koichi, good to you. All right. So I do see a pit pin that is uh, not attached to anything. I think all pit pins should be attached, right? You know, I feel it may be the locking pit pin on the right side. A firm, yeah, all of those pit pins should be installed. Do you think it's the locking pit pin for the telescoping feature of the mid strip? Zena, you're coming in, Shoppy. We've got about two minutes of ratty comms here, guys. Nicole Mann noted that she found a spare pit pin. Um, meanwhile, here in Mission Control, they've noted that they all the pit pins do indeed need to be installed onto this mod kit that they've been working on. So we're trying to find a place for it. Let me work on that. Uh... Crew, if you can hear, we've got about two minutes of ratty calm. Okay, I've got your back. 
and I did not copy your last. Concerning the fit pin. Yeah, A firm ready comes here. We've got a minute remaining. A firm all pit pins should be installed. Did you think that was the locking pit pin for the telescoping feature of the mid strut? That's what I think it is on the right side. Okay, guys, in order to reinstall the pit pin, we'll need to open the MLI again. Koichi, you can pause on the wire tie for now. I missed that call. Ready, come, hand over here. As we work to get our communication back and our live views here shortly, a little update on what tasks have been done or what are still to come. No, Nicole Mann successfully routed cables at the 1A power channel. That's where they've been working okay, guys, this whole time. You. Hopefully comms should be a little less rowdy. rowdy Zena Cardman is about to give an update. Koichi, we'll have you pause with the wire tie ops for now. And Duke, you'll head to 1 Bravo. Oh, is that right? Okay. Okay, I'm headed to one bravo. Perfect. We'll also take a glove hat and gauntlet check from you both. Okay, I got the wrong wire tie ready to go. Copy. So where you see them now, they're at the 1A power channel. EV1, top is dry and gauntlets are down. Okay, uh, 82, uh, gloves are good, the half is dry, and gauntlets uh, in place. Okay, copy EV1 and EV2. So Duke will be having you grab the cable bag and heading out to 1 Bravo. Koichi, you'll be working all of the MLI stuff here. In order to reinstall that pit pin that Duke saw uh, not installed, this is the locking pit pin for the telescoping feature, you'll need to peel back the MLI a bit. Did it come out? I think we I just missed in installing it. Okay. okay, so that's the, could you tell me that where it is? It is floating. Um, station inboard of the collar bolts directly opposite of you. It's on, on this Not side. Canister side. Okay. I think you'll have to peel back the MLI. Peel back this MLI? Oh, yeah, I'll yep. peel open the top and the bottom, and then you'll be able to see it. That's correct. And, Duke, we'd like you moving out to one Bravo, so we'll have you translate. Yeah, I'm just picking up the... Copy. And I'm just picking up the cables, not the whole bag, right? Okay. That's correct. You're translating to the cable bag, picking up the one Bravo cables, and heading out to one Bravo. You can see Koichi Wakata on the right side of your screen. That is his point of view. Uh, Nicole Mann identified a pit pin that had not been installed into the structure. So Koichi Wakata is undoing these levels of multi-layer insulation to be able to place the pit pin. Copy. And yeah, that lanyard will probably be at full extension. And if you need to peel back more of the MLI, let us know. 
If you can do a washer check okay. also on that pit pin before you install it, just make sure that the washer is over the detents. Okay, washer is there. And the pit pin is in. Do you see that on the header? Copy, Koichi. That looks good. We can close up that MLI again, and we'll work on the MLI wire tie install. Okay. Okay. If this closes completely without the wire tie, that's also fine, right? Indeed, Koichi. Let me try that again. Okay. Let me try that. Coming up now on the four-hour mark of the spacewalk, during part one of the spacewalk, they completed installation of a mod kit on the 1B power channel, and today they were finishing up work on the 1A channel. Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata successfully routed some cables around the 1A site, again where they've been spending the majority of their spacewalk. Nicole Mann is now making her way over to the 1B channel uh, where they spent their previous spacewalk to route some cables there as well. Is the other, can you see the camera right still? Um, I cannot at the moment. Okay. Um, All right. To try to come around now. Looks like it's closed uh, without the wire tires, but I just wanted to make sure that it's the case. Copy, Koichi, and you can reorient yourself and get into oh. any body position that you need in order to see the other side of the MOI there. Yeah, I think if you poke your head inside the triangle and look out, you'll, there's a little gap, but I think you'll be able to fix it. Okay. And guys, big picture update for you. We're at PET of four hours on the nose. We're about 45 minutes down on the timeline right now. So we're going to be prioritizing doing those one Bravo cables that Duke is on her way out to do. We'll have a modified version of the APFR shuffle. We're still working that plan. And then we do still intend to grab the P6 APFR. Copy that. We've got plenty of PET time from a consumable standpoint. We're at about 7.45 there, just for your FYI. I should And can we see the data looking good? Dina, can you update us on Kalichi's suit data? Exactly what we're talking right now. So after analyzing the data, it looks like it was just a blip in the sensor data, but we are happy with the suit. Good to continue. You know, awesome. Okay, good news, and my TCV is set to six. Copy, TCV six. Here on the ground, NASA astronaut Zena Cardman just gave a big picture overview of our spacewalk. She talked about the PET, or the phased elapsed time. This is the total time that they've been spacewalking with their suits on battery power, which is a little over four hours. With their remaining time, Nicole Mann is indeed going to continue routing cables at the 1B power channel. Koichi Wakata is indeed going to move the portable foot restraints around. Remember, one of them had a little bit of a sticky knob on the that controlled the pitch fun function when moving around uh, from side to side. Um, they're working a plan now on how to go about that. Without adding a tie, but let's make sure that it's the case. Copy. Great news. 
Previously, Koichi Wakata noticed a spike in his O2 data. Um, ground teams here in Mission Control uh, ran all of their data, looked at everything, including a suit check of Koichi Wakata's suit, and they've been monitoring the data in the meantime. Zena Cardman did relay to the crew that they have seen no abnormalities again and are confident that it was just a little blip in the data. All right, Koichi, we are waiting on confirmation from all of the interested parties here, but we will have you do a HECA scan as well. Okay. Okay, let me check that. Look, I don't know if you can see it, no. I'm sorry, I cannot, but all right, that's if you look right. at this table, I can. Okay, no problem, I will do the HECA scan now. Copy, Koichi, and we will actually have you install that wire tie. We think we see a gap in the MLI. All right, okay. 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 Looks like it's just not long enough. Then let me uh, do the wire tie first. Do the HECA scan. Yeah, we agree with that, Koichi. Let's get that wire tie on there, and then we'll have you head over to the mounting bracket for a better vantage point for your HECA scan. Okay, Zena, I have the cables, and I am headed out to one Bravo. Copy, Duke. You'll be crossing the keel pin and the APFR going to the non-radiator side. Okay, Zena, I, I... And then outboard to S5, S6. Okay, Zena, I uh, put the wire tie three quick. Hello, Dana. Copy, Koichi. We see that in your HECA. So we'll have you head over to the mounting bracket and we'll get a really good HECA scan. Okay. Moving right down the to-do list here, you can see NASA astronaut Nicole Mann on the bottom of your screen. She's got the legs with the red stripes. She's holding a bundle of cables, and she's going to make her way out to the 1B power channel where her she spent a lot of time in her previous spacewalk. She just routed the cables here at the worksite site that she's at, 1A, and now she's making her way over to 1B. The space station just experienced an orbital sunset, as you can just see, it just got a lot darker on your screen. I'm at the uh, mountain bracket. Copy, and Koichi. I'm showing the upper side. Great, we're taking a look. Upper side looks good. Okay. All right. Covering everything. Looking good, Koichi. Give us just a moment while everybody analyzes. Okay.
Okay, Koichi, the upper triangle looks great. If we could have you dip below that mounting bracket and take a look at the mid strut and try to get the mid strut in your heck of you. Copy. Copy that. That's a good position. We're checking on the view, Koichi. Held up here. I'm just uh, fighting with this bundle coming apart here. Copy, Duke. Take the time that you need to get everything in a good config. Minimize the snag hazards. Yeah. And do what works best for you, but you can also put that cable bundle around your BRT and help tend it toward your body. Let's have you take a look at the left side mid -strut. Okay, I'm pointing at the left side. All right, a little further left with your pan there, Koichi. We'll take one last look. Okay, a little further left. Okay. A little bit further so that we can see the full left side in your heck of you. That's better. Okay. I need to go any further. Koichi, we're happy with that HECA scan. And with that, you can head back around the mass okay. canister and you'll be picking up the TBA bag from the long handrail. Copy that. On the left of your screen, you can see the point of view of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. I am headed out. She's got a bunch of cables in her hands and she's making her way to the 1B work site for some cable routing. Okay. I just wanted to double check with you that uh, this uh, MRI that I attached, uh, uh, you know, it covers the uh, the one off a cable as well. It's okay, right? Checking, Kuichi. Yeah, Kuichi, we're good with that config. TBA bag, bringing it to the cable bag, and stowing it.
Copy, right hand turn at 2125. 2138. We'll be following along. 2138 is a good handrail. We track you going over the A frame to the non radiator side. Two zero zero six for the green hook. These numbers that you're hearing the Coleman communicate with the ground are sort of visual markers, um, handrail numbers that are listed on the outside of the space station that help us know where she is in relation to the outside of the space station as she moves on her way to the one B power channel. Then I picked up the uh, TVA bag, got my way to the cable bag. Perfect. Okay, I, I saw it. Copy, Kuichi. Don't need to check, Vina, thank you. And we have two spacewalkers on the move. They have completely installed what they set out to do today, install the mid strut and lower strut, completing the support structure that they've been working on. And now they're moving on to some get ahead tasks. taking a look at that, just a reminder, some cautions for you are to minimize loads into the wire ties and MLI that are on that handrail 2008 and don't translate on the radiator base handrails. Uh, I'm just going to put a, 
barely younger than four. Actually, I brought my green hooks in, so this will be okay. Copy, Duke. Because you're not Copy, Duke. Okay, do not match the cable bag. Copy, Koichi. You can stow the TBA bag in the cable bag. Copy that. Duke, once you've got that green hook in place, you'll be heading outboard to S6, the outboard non-radiator corner. Okay, um, headed straight out, and I've got the green hook on 2006. Copy. Okay, I uh, just the uh, TTA bag in the uh, cable bag. Okay, I'm just uh, reaching the uh, here. Copy that. Copy, Koichi. Zena, so uh, anything else that I can put it in the cable bag other than the TTA bag? You can also clean up that GoPro that you put out. Okay, we'll do that. So NASA astronaut Nicole Mann is making her way out to the 1B power channel. They were at the 1A site. That's where they spent the majority of their spacewalking time today. Thus far, the majority of the four hours and four and a half hours that they've spent out there. Now you can see 1A kind of towards the top of your screen there in the yellow. She's making her way now to 1B, just so you kind of get a visualization of where she's going. I'm at the uh, mid strut on the right side. I'm going to head out, put the scoop down on the mounting bracket. Copy.
say, uh, you know, our cable bag is closed, then I put in the uh, TDA bag and also GoPro. Okay, copy. That's great news. Koichi, for you. Once you're ready, you'll be retrieving the APFR and WIFX from WIF 25 and putting it on your BRT, translating into the starboard seat of WIF. I'm working on the APFR retrieval. Taking a look at your screen, the points of view from our astronauts. On the right side, Koichi Wakata is retrieving a portable foot restraint. Meanwhile, on the left... Okay, guys, big picture update for you both here. Duke, once you have that scoop installed, we're actually going to have you wire tie the cable bundle to the mounting bracket, similar to what you guys did on the last EVA. Just get it sucked to the mounting bracket as best you can, low profile. We're at about four and a half hours PET, and so we're looking at a very modified APFR uh, reconfig here. We'll have Koichi bring that sticky APFR back to the seated cart, and then Duke will have you meet Koichi at the seated carts, and we'll make a plan from there. But we will not be having you go further out for it after that, most likely. We'll be working on a plan. Yeah, we want to, sorry, to clarify, okay, we want to... Uh, you know what, I could just scoot down and then we could talk about cables. Perfect. So, yeah, we won't be having you go outboard starboard again, but we do want to prioritize that P6 APFR. Copy. Easy to copy. Those words from NASA astronaut Zena Cardman up to our spacewalking astronauts. Nicole Mann has brought out her cable bundle out to the 1B work site. Rather than doing what she did at the 1A work site and kind of routing them and wire tying them neatly, instead she's going to take the whole bundle and keep it in place there for future spacewalkers to work on at another time.
Meanwhile, they do indeed want Koichi Wakata to stow that portable foot restraint that gave them trouble during the last spacewalk onto a CETA cart. CETA cart meaning crew equipment translation aid cart. It's essentially an equipment locker, an area outside of the space station where they can store uh, spare parts. Hey Duke, that looks great in your heck of you. So we'll have to just use one of the integral wire ties that's already on the cable bundle and use that to help tend the cable to the mounting bracket. Let's see, can I just put either end to the um, lower strut? Because there's already a wire tie there. I think that'll be more expeditious. That's okay with you. Hey, Firm Duke. We're good with that plan. Okay, then I picked up, uh, I read it to the uh, space extender, and then I picked up the, the VRT. I'm going to translate. Copy, Koichi. You'll be heading inboard to the starboard CETA cart. See that. Some more directional cues, though, going inboard or towards the center of the International Space Station. Let me adjust the TCB a little bit. TCD switch from 5 to 6. Copy, TCD 6. Wakata on the move okay, once again. Do you want me to route it at the proper location with the RP mark? Yeah, if you can get that wire tie on the Sharpie mark, that would be ideal. Yeah, I think that's easy enough. Perfect. Wakata is in possession of that APFR, that portable foot restraint, and is on his way to that CETA cart where he can stow it. Copy that. We're in a brief communications handover here in Mission Control. We expect to get our video back shortly. We're still able to hear the crew at this time. As we come out of this handover period and we regain our video, uh, it'll slight, we'll get a slightly better view when we're back as the International Space Station is beginning to enter an orbital daytime. We expect that pretty shortly here.
Okay, uh, and at the anchor point, and I'm going to translate continue to the average video card. Copy, Koichi. I'm with you for a few minutes. Uh, it sounds good. We're following along. Okay, great. How's it going, Duke? Bill, well, I just got my three twists on the lower right for the cables, and it looks like the sun is coming up. Okay. It's kind of pretty here on the very end of the station. Very nice. I'm translating towards the uh, starboard speedo card now with uh, with an APFR. Extension. Okay, Drew, if you're happy with these cables, I'm going to um, head to Ingo to meet Koichi, if you agree. Yep, Duke, we're happy with that plan, and uh, please pick up the cable bag on your way in uh, to meet up with uh, Koichi. Okay. Okay, Drew, I'm at the CETA. That was CETA, I'm going to with one. That's affirmative. Stow the WIFX in starboard CETA with number one, and I'll give you the numbers when you're ready. Okay, stand by. If you're just joining us, you're watching a spacewalk outside of the International Space Station with our spacewalkers, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann. We are about four hours, 38 minutes in to our spacewalk today. The main objective, finish construction of the 1A IROSA mod kit. So what does this mean? Well, the International Space Station is undergoing some power upgrades including adding some rollout solar rays. They roll out like a rug, sort of on top of the existing rigid regular arrays that have been there for a while. It's, but these rollout solar arrays are very powerful. They're very efficient. So even though they're kind of overlaying the top of the rigid arrays, it's actually going to result in more power generation. But before these solar arrays can be installed, um, the astronauts need to do some construction outside of the space station. We call them mod kits. It consists of six struts and a mounting bracket that these solar panels can sit on. And that's what they've completed today. They began their task back in January 20th. And Nicole Mann. Okay, Koichi. Okay, you're ready to copy for the uh, setting. Yep. Nicole Mann and okay, so, uh, you're looking Koichi for Wakata have 11. completed its construction today. They're also doing some additional tasks. Um, Nicole Mann just brought some cables out to the 1B power channel. And Koichi's working on bringing an, our, a sticky portable foot restraint over and to a CETA cart. And setting of one. OK, 11 and alpha, one. OK, 11 o'clock.
does not engage on the Copy, Koichi. Yeah, we see that in your HECA. Do what? I'll just say, pick it up, my green hope. Copy, Duke. Okay, Zina, any suggestions? It looks like it's uh, in, but uh, not completely in. Okay, copy, Koichi. Yeah, it looks. In, but I also see the locking collar is not black on black. Correct. If it helps, you can take it out and go in with a little bit more force. Oh, it looks black on black in your head okay, of view. Now, can you confirm? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I see a lack of black. Good pull test and a good twist test. Okay, looks like it's in. Outstanding. Confirm. Yeah, looks good in your heck of you right. to me. Okay, so if you've got that okay. set at 11 alpha and an extension of one, then we are good on the WIFX. Okay, 11 alpha. On the right of your screen, Koichi Wakata, his point of view, he's at the CETA cart right now. You see the word CETA 2. You can continue. He's in the process of stowing the portable foot restraint. It looks like he got it connected. Again, it's kind of just a locker where you can keep spare parts and retrieve them as needed outside of the space station. And just to remind you, since I'm picking up where Drew left off here, Duke, you'll be picking up that cable bag as well. Okay, pick up the cable bag. Got me. I'm at 2003. I'm crossing over. Copy, Duke. Okay, uh, this uh, zero one uh, eleven o'clock, pitch of alpha, uh, length of one on the V six tender complete. Perfect. You will now roll and yaw the APFR. You're going to pop a pop a box okay. six, and clocking should still be twelve. Pop a pop a box six. Kuichi Wakata now at the seat of cart, maneuvering the portable foot restraint um, that Zena Cartman had requested. Earlier in the spacewalk, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann finished construction of a support structure that will house an IROSA, or roll-out solar array, launching later this summer. They've totally completed construction. This was at the 1A power channel, and during their previous spacewalk, they completed work on the 1B power channel. Uh, just before this, Koichi Wakata had completed the cleanup of some multi-layer insulation, putting a pit pin back in there, closing up the insulation, getting it nice and protected against the elements of space. Right now, not on screen, Nicole Mann is wrapping up, um, bringing some cables out to the 1B power channel. While Koichi here, right on your screen, is working on a articulating portable foot restraint um, on the S4 side of the space station. Uh -huh. 
this task that he's doing here sets them up in a good position um, for the IROSA installation. So the solar panels won't be launched until this summer and when they're ready to be installed, this portable foot restraint is already in a good position for them to use during that installation. Um, 12 o'clock, Papa Papa Fox 6 from the ATFR complete with the English State Captain. Okay, copy Papa Papa Fox 6. That's a great config. Okay. Okay, Koichi, then, uh, next we're actually going to have the, uh, you head to the anchor hooks and be ready to meet Duke okay. when she arrives there with the cable bag. We'll have her pass off the cable Happy. bag to you, and you can take it to the airlock. Okay. Happy. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to go back around the board and cross over, then go out for the IEA. Do you agree? I do agree, Duke. Yep. And big picture, Koichi, once you get that cable bag and take it to the airlock, Duke, we're going to have you head out to P6 for that P6 APFR. And then, Koichi, you can head back out and we'll have you do the ingress aid swap. Okay, copy. our space walkers work together in support of building that support structure and then went their separate ways to do their own tasks. The space walkers are now working to meet up together again. Copy both. Vina, can I make the Duke here at the anchor? Okay. A from Koichi, yeah, we'll have you hang out there. Duke's on her way with the cable bag. Okay. Do that. Koichi has reached his rendezvous point, and Nicole Mann is making his way over to him to hand Koichi Wakata a cable bag. a little different than when I did the outboard one, so I just want to double check if you're okay with that. Unnecessary, Duke. Got that to scoop up that mounting bracket? Just to confirm, are you seeing a different clocking on the scoop, or are you thinking it may have come unlocked? No, not a different clocking. When I put the, the outboard one to lock, it was, um, like I thought I had it to lock, but then I had to push it extra, and it 
it moved or the lock. And this one just kind of went right into lock. So then I was second guessing myself. But I can take a look at it now, or if you want to just make a note when they come out this summer, yeah. you can double check yeah, it. Yeah, we'll make a note. Duke, do you think you can see it from where you are, just to get eyes on and verify that it's actually locked? I know. I looked and I couldn't tell. I mean, it looks like it's locked, but uh, the one that when I did it outboard, I thought it was locked and I could pull the detent out and it was over, but then I pushed it a little more and it had like this, you know, like that little satisfying click. So I don't recall from this one, so that's why I was second guessing. Okay, Duke, on second thought, we will have you go up and just double check. Okay, um, I'm going to leave the bag here then since like, all I have is a BRT on it. It's still, it's still strapped down. Copy, yep. Meanwhile, uh, should I get the uh, cable bag? Koichi, let's have you grab the cable bag, actually, while Duke does that double check. Okay. And then you can bring the cable bag to the airlock. Sounds good. Okay. All right, sounds good. This is a bit of a delicate dance as Koichi Wakata makes his way over to Nicole Mann to grab a cable bag. As you can imagine, they each have several tethers uh, connecting them to the International Space Station, and they certainly don't want to get tangled. Okay, thanks for the heads up. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, thanks. 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 Okay, Okay, I'll pause you right here. I think I can continue to translate, right? Affirm, Koichi. You can translate, and just be extra okay. cautious of Duke's safety tether. It is coming away uh, from structure toward her, so your feet are running over top of it right now. I recommend getting a fair lead on it if you I can. See. I uh, go uh, see this side, and I see that better. Copy, Koichi. Once Koichi Wakata has that cable bag, he's going to make his way over to the airlock where the spacewalk began today and stow it temporarily. All right, Duke, you're good to go. Let's get eyes on that scoop as fast okay. as we can. All right, I'm continuing. And Koichi, just watch out for that tether. You're going back and forth underneath Duke's safety tether right now. Okay, I see it uh, also. I think I was i going to uh, fail lead on the 2213 or 2214. Koichi, I think the best plan of action is for you to back out the way you came. We're concerned about okay. safety tethers and a big tangle here. We're at about five okay. hours TET, so we want to avoid any safety tether okay. crosses. Copy that. Copy that. So uh, Duke's tether should be, I should be over Duke's tether, right? 
Yeah, you are over Duke's tether, yeah. and now you are also under Duke's tether. So you'll have to come under. back from underneath Duke's right. tether in order to cross back over along the cedar rail. We'll keep an eye okay, on it. Okay, so I'll come back. Okay, I'll come back underneath. Hey, no, the scoop is good. Thanks for letting me double check that. If it's going to help with safety tether routing, I could come down the right side of the mod kit. Duke, let's have you stand by there. I think actually having you head okay. back down the way you came is the best course of action. Koichi is just about free of your safety tether now. Okay, I'll stay put. That'd be great. Then, then, uh, okay, I am uh, approaching that uh, crossing point. Stop you, Koichi. Okay, so uh, can I keep coming back to the anchor point? That's perfect. Okay, now we're it's clear. good with that. Okay, I'm, I'm clear. We like you there. Okay. Let's have you just pause there for a moment, and you can get back in a normal body okay. orientation. Duke, you can come off of the mod kit now, grab the cable bag, and we'll have okay. you both head in board. Sorry for the shuffle there. Okay. No problem. Actually, this orientation is better for safety better monitoring, so I will stay in this orientation. And speaking of that, how is my safety tether creaking? It's good. good. Yeah, it's good. It's good, and it's clear about me. Or is it relative to my feet? It's uh, on your left side. And now uh, it's between. Now it's on your right, uh, right side. Okay, it should be on my right side, so. Now it's, yeah, it's on your right uh, right side, and now it's getting there. Okay, guys. In the middle. We're happy with the safety tether routing at this point. Koichi, we can have you actually head back inboard to the anchor hooks, and we'll have Duke do the cable bag pass off there. Okay, I'll go back to the anchor hook. Sorry about that. Um, I am back at the bag. It's picking it up now. Okay. Sounds good. The left of your screen, in Nicole Mann's point of view, you can see the cable bag that we're talking about. She's going to hand it off to Koichi so he could go bring it to the airlock. Okay, I'm at the anchor hook. Copy, Koichi. We'll have you just hang out there for a moment, and Duke will meet you with the cable bag. Okay, copy. And then we'll have you heading inboard copy first. Copy that. Okay, I've got the bag on my DRT. Just releasing it from structure, and I'll be right there, Koichi. Okay. And then after that, I can uh, go to the airlock and stow the cable bag. Is that right? Hey, firm. We have you stow that cable bag in the airlock, and then you can pop back out of the airlock. You'll put down a waist tether and lock that waist tether, and then we'll work the uh, slingshot cleanup. Okay. I don't come back to the other uh, cedar card. Negative. Not yet. We'll have to clean up the Good. slingshot first. So yes. just get back to the airlock, and you'll put your waist tether on the airlock steering Please. extender, stow that crew lock, the uh, cable bag in the crew lock, and then we'll have some further instructions for cleaning up the slingshot. Okay, copy that.
Now five hours into the spacewalk. Nicole Mann is in the process of handing Koichi Wakata a cable bag. It's not as simple as just handing it over. Uh, you can see they're on different planes there. Koichi had to move one of his anchor hooks to be able to receive it and move over to the airlock. Um, earlier in our coverage, we described these anchor hooks kind of like rock wall climbing. You have your ropes tied to one central point up at the top, but you're still free to move up, down, all around. Um, so he had to reset his anchor hook in order to move to the airlock. Nicole Mann had to do the same thing, but also moving the cable bag from where it was stowed onto her body restraint tether and now over to Koichi Wakata. They're handing over the bags now. And there's the bag floating just above our spacewalkers there. PET, 
We have plenty of consumables, looking at uh, about a 740 PET based on consumables at this point, so you're doing great. What we could do is work the P6 APFR retrieval. That would put us at about seven hours PET if that all goes smoothly. Uh, there's always a chance as you come back outboard to just pause and not go all the way out to P6. Or if you make it to P6, you can always drop off that APFR early in order to head inboard more quickly. So we'll just be looking for your thoughts on that plan. Koichi, while Duke does the P6 APFR retrieval, you could be working the ingress aid swap on the seated carts. So we'll just take uh, your thoughts on how you're feeling in terms of energy management and everything about that plan. Um, yeah, so the plan is I'll head out to P6 and grab that APFR and understand that I can break out uh, really at any point if, uh, if for some reason it's going wrong. It works for me. What do you think, Kaliki? Yeah, for me, the uh, English aid swap seems to be good, and then the uh, translation of you translating to the P6 seems to be a good idea. Okay, perfect. We copy all. So Koichi, you'll continue inboard, get that cable bag in the airlock, get your waist tether hooked up to the airlock D-ring extender. We'll clean up the slingshot. And as we work that, we still have time to just send you both to the airlock or for other get-ahead tasks. But for now, that's our plan. Copy that. And with words from Zena Cardman, our spacewalkers now have their marching orders. For the rest of the spacewalk, uh, we're about five hours in so far. But for the remainder, uh, Koichi Wakata is going to go drop off a cable bag and then swap out some ingress aids. Ingress aids are referring to our portable foot restraints, kind of something that helps you get into these portable foot restraints. He's going to swap out the ingress aid for those. Meanwhile, Nicole Mann is making her way to the far end of the space station P6, the port 6 truss, to retrieve a portable foot restraint herself and just bring it a little bit closer for a future, for a future spacewalk. I'm at the airlock, opening up the thermal cover. Copy, Koichi. You can get your waist tether on the airlock during extender. Gate closed, lock, lock, unlock. Do you work? My left waist tether is now attached to airlock steering extender gate close foot lock lock on lock. Copy Koichi. Okay. And we'll get a check also of the other end of that waist tether, the small hook on your suit during extender. Small hook is attached. Okay, small hook is attached to my left steering extender gate close hook lock lock on lock. Perfect. Okay, Koichi, with your go, Duke can start cleaning up. Duke, for you, that would be releasing. Duke, your go to proceed. 
You'll release Koichi's EV2 anchor hook from 3011, stow it on your waist tether with the clo uh, gate closed hook lock, lock on block. Okay, I have a rat to EV2's anchor hook and removing EV2's hook. Copy. So you'll get that on your waist tether with both of the hooks closed, locked, black on black. Okay, now at this time, go ahead and go to install the uh, cable bag inside of the airlock. Hey, firm, you can get that cable lock, cable bag in the airlock. Copy, you work. And we'll check for your small hook as well on your waist tether that it is locked black on black as well. Koichi Wakata in the airlock now stowing the cable bag he just retrieved from Nicole Mann. Okay, copy Duke. With that, you can get your EV1 anchor hook from handrail 3217 and stow it on your mini workstation. You can head inboard. So you heard some chatter with Nicole Mann with our ground IV Zenit Cardman today here on the ground. She's configuring her hooks to be in a position to go out to the far reaches of the space station, the Port 6 truss, to retrieve a portable foot restraint. Astronaut Nicole Mann in your view now. The cable bag is attached to the red inside of the crew lock. Copy. Great work, Koichi. We'll have you hang out there. We still need your waist tether locked to the airlock during a extender while well, Duke is resetting those anchor hooks. Copy. Hey, I'm coming on the car. Copy, Duke. And you'll be continuing along. You're going to be looking for mile marker 8190 for those new anchor hook locations that'll be on S0. Okay, 8190. And Koichi Wakata has successfully stowed the cable bag back into the airlock.
We're just over five hours and 15 minutes in today's spacewalk with NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata. Nicole Mann is currently resetting some anchor hooks. Quick hand over here, guys. So these anchor hooks were initially set when heading to the mod kit work sites for the first half of the installation of this mod kit. Uh, now they need to reset them to a different location in order for Nicole Mann to reach the port side to grab the portable foot restraint, portable foot restraint from the port six truss. Even though we're needing to reset the anchor hooks right now in order for Nicole Mann to get to where she is to the P6 truss, um, after that it's not necessary to reset them on her way back as they can reach the airlock from the port side anchors. Okay, reset the anchor, 8190, so I'm going to put down our anchors. Okay, perfect, Duke. Yep, just Nader of mile marker 8190. You're looking for S0, handrail 3530. And you'll be putting your EV-1 anchor hook on 3530. Okay, my EV-1 anchor hook is on 3530. It's close, lighter's locked, black on black. Perfect. Next, you can attach Koichi's EV-2 anchor hook to handrail 3531. That's just Zenith of mile marker 8190. Okay, EV2's anchor hook is on 3531. It's closed, light is locked, and black on black. Copy, Duke. With that, Koichi, you can release your waist tether and get the thermal cover closed. You'll be heading Copy that anymore. back to the seat of carts. Duke, next for you, you'll be continuing outboard, translating to the APFR in P6 with 17. Okay. Get all cleaned up here. 
and Nicole Mann is on the move after completing another item on her checklist of resetting these anchors. Again, these anchors were originally set as a way to get them to the 1A work site where they were working on this mod kit, this support structure that they've been building for these two spacewalks. But in order for her to do this task of going out to the port 6 truss at the far end of the space station to retrieve this portable foot restraint, they needed to reset these anchors, put them in a different position so she could get out there. Heading outboard on phase one, crossing the Sarge, and dropping your green hook at P4, handrail 5111. Okay, I'll check in with you when I cross the Sarge. Perfect. And there's Nicole Mann on your screen now, making her way out. Meanwhile, Koichi Wakata is still at the airlock. The cable bag he was working with is properly stowed, and now he's working to close the thermal cover of the airlock. Zina, thermal cover is closed. I'm going to translate back to starboard. Okay. Copy. Sounds great. Copy, gauntlets down. Can you give me that uh, green hook again? That's going to be P4, handrail 5111. Uh, the uh, drop is from uh, the one that I installed to... You're going to be grabbing the ingress aid the, uh, from that sticky APFR the, that you brought inboard and transferring it to another APFR right. that's also on the starboard seated cart. It's in WIF 4. Okay, I see that. Okay, I see that. 
Okay, Green Hook is down. Copy, Green Hook, Duke. Next, you'll be crossing over to IEA to the non-radiator side. And at the outboard non-radiator edge, you'll continue outboard. Okay, I'm at the edge. I don't see a radiator. I'm headed outward. I'm going to handrail 5117. That's a good handrail, Duke. Koichi, once you get the ingress aid, you can take the wire tie from the ingress aid and stow it in your trash bag, and then you'll install it on the APFR in WIF-4, it being the ingress aid. Copy that. Copy. Before that, I will attach my wrench to the uh, ingress. Copy, Koichi. Koichi will take a glove, hat, and gauntlet check yeah. from you. Okay. Copy all. Thanks, Koichi. Thank you. Okay, I'm at the APFR, Koichi. Okay, I am uh, still in the Cito cart, Stavros Cito cart. Okay, and Gene, I think I was going to set the yaw while I was here. Yes, ma'am. You can me up on that. That's correct. So you're going to set that yaw to three. All three, okay. And we'll take a glove hat and gauntlet check from you as well, Duke. Okay. Ones, gloves are good. Top is dry, and thermometer down. Copy all, Duke. Thanks. Okay, we said a yaw of three. A firm yaw of three. Okay, yaw three set. Copy. You can retrieve that APFR and stow it on your BRT. Then I retrieve the uh, wire tie from the uh, English aid and I'm going to put it in my trash bag. Copy. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Copy, Koichi. Getting live views of mission control here under the direction of Flight Director Chloe Maring. She's consulting with the spacewalking team behind her, um, getting the rest of the tasks planned out for this spacewalk. We are five hours and 30 minutes in. Nicole Mann has reached her destination at the P-6 truss, uh, again, quite far away from the center of the space station to retrieve a portable foot restraint. Uh, she has it in tow and is now making her way back. This just helps future spacewalkers not have to take the time to have to go out there during their spacewalk, really setting us up for success for the next one. So I'm going to translate back like this, I believe. It's going to collapse, which is not bent down. Copy, Duke. That makes sense to me. I'll just see. I'll, I'll just go slow. I'm aware that it's going to stick out more than normal. We've got our live views back on the left of your screen. You see NASA astronaut Nicole Mann with that portable foot restraint. I'm about to install the ingress gate to the different TFR in the starboard seat of cart. Okay, I just picked up the TFR. I'm about to head back inboard. Okay. Kuichi Wakata is also setting future spacewalkers up for success. He's taking an ingress aid of a portable foot restraint and putting it on another, on another one. That ATFR whenever you need. We're at about a PET of 540. Okay, doing good right now. Fortunately, it's, it's not a bad translation, but um, hopefully this guy doesn't swing too much. I'm going to take it slow. Copy all, Duke. I like that plan. You did a great job with that translation on the way out. Okay, Ingress uh, 8 is attached. Uh, black on black, good pull test, good twist test. I'm going to put attach the new uh, wire tie on the A if I Ingress 8. Copy, Koichi, that's a good plan.
You can see Wakata on your screen now installing a short wire tie on the ingress aid. This ingress great aid goes onto the portable foot restraint, kind of helps the spacewalkers get their feet into it. Great work, both of you. We've got plenty of time. Just be nice and deliberate as we get you both back in board and cleaned up. Sounds good. Sounds good. As our spacewalkers complete their last tasks of the day before cleaning up their work sites and heading back into the airlock uh, for a job well done, if you have any questions about what you've been seeing today, go ahead and put your question on social media using hashtag AskNASA, and we'll do our best to answer on air. Okay, I'm still in the double seat of cart. Let's copy you both. Hello, Marcus. And Duke, you'll be I'm at the... I'm working on uh, installing the wire tie on the AIA. Copy, Koichi. Great work. Duke, for you, you'll be heading back to that P4IEA once you're on the inboard edge of the P4IEA, cross over to the radiator side and pick up your green hook. We got one question on YouTube about when these IROSAs, the rollout solar arrays, will be launching. So remember that for every IROSA or solar array that we're adding to the space station that has to have a counterpart, it's mounting bracket that attaches it to the outside of the space station. So in today's spacewalk, we did install that mounting bracket to the 1A power channel, and soon it'll get paired with an IROSA. And to answer that question on YouTube, um, the IROSA will be launching on a SpaceX car Cargo Dragon vehicle um, during the SpaceX 28, the 28th Commercial Resupply Services mission, and that'll be launching sometime this summer. Okay, 
Copy, that's perfect. And after that, looks like the Ingress 8 is already tucked pretty low profile. Okay, I uh, didn't get your last. Uh, Ingress 8 is already tucked in. We got another, another question, this time from Twitter, from Mike Washington, who asks about the total duration of the spacewalk. We're five hours and 43 minutes in so far. Our spacewalk began at 6.45 a.m. Central Time. We expect it to go up to seven hours. Pictures of the sticky APFR. If you could just get some eyes on, get some good photos, see what you can see. Yeah, maybe we'll uh, discover something about that sticky pitch. Copy that. Okay, Green Hook is picked up. I'm crossing over. Copy, Duke. Great work. Koichi, for you, if you see anything that looks like an MMOD strike, obviously make sure to keep your hands well clear of it. Don't touch that area, and we'll take photos. Okay, do you have any specific areas that you're interested in? Or is that a pitch knob area or everywhere? The pitch joint especially, and if you see anything obvious, let us know. Okay, copy that. This is at night, and it's, uh, I see, uh, you know, light from uh, external light. And I'll be uh, desirable lighting to take pictures, but uh, I'll try to take pictures as much as I can. Copy, that's no problem, Koichi. Yeah, we'll just snag a couple photos and then we'll have you head inboard to the airlock and stay ahead of Duke there. Copy. Yeah, back on phase one. Okay. Copy, Duke. I'm still taking pictures at the Sita. The Sita. The Sita. Okay, no worries, Koichi. I got a ways to go. Okay. I'll take taking pictures here then. You can see Spacewalker Koichi Wakata there acting as photographer. He's documenting this sticky uh, portable foot restraint pitch joint. Uh, gave them some trouble during the last spacewalk, so he's getting documentation so our ground teams can take a better look at it. As Koichi Wakata documents the sticky portable foot restraint, I want to take another question from Twitter, this time from MK9, who asks, what are the next steps for the IROSA solar array upgrades? Is it 4A and 4B channels remaining to have their solar array deployed? 
So I want you to take a look at this graphic here, kind of shows what we've done. So 4A and 4B that MK9 mentions in his or her tweet, it's already completed, has mounting bracket and has solar array. Four are done. 3A, 4A, 2B, and 4B are already deployed. Um, we've completed the mounting hardware for 1A and 1B. All that's left is for them to get iRosis themselves, roll out solar arrays. So to answer the question, uh, 1A and 1B are next up to get the iRosis solar arrays. And correction on that clocking dupe, that's eight, not nine. Yes, eight, thank you. A while ago, Nicole Mann set out to travel out to the Port 6 truss of the International Space Station to grab a articulating portable foot restraint. She has grabbed it and made her way to a CETA cart, a CETA cart being a sort of stowage locker uh, to the outside of the International Space Station where they can kind of keep and store things as they need it. And, and now she's working on stowing it uh, onto the CETA cart. Make sure that the ingress aid isn't going to be in the way or anything on structure will be in the way of you installing and then yeah. holding down that ingress aid. Okay, you got it. I'm here with two, get that off my BRT now. Yes, Vina, I'm still trying to go to the other side of the AT farm for the big joint. Copy, Koichi, no problem. We've got a great camera view of you looking good. You're getting live views from both of our spacewalking astronauts. We're midway through an orbital nighttime outside of the International Space Station as it flies over the coast of Somalia. It looks like eight is going to be good with the ingress aid, and then I'll be able to uh, hold it down. And Koichi, if you check, stand by. We were tracking a possibly a wire tie that may have come out of your trash bag. Not sure if you have eyes on. Wire tie. Wire tie is the Um, 
my tie in the perfect day and my it's hard to deal. I cannot open the the trash bag. Yeah, copy. No problem. We'll check the video, Koichi. Where do you see it? We saw it on the okay. video, we think. We'll check the video. We'll find it out. You uh, might be able to feel the soft fabric portion of okay. your trash bag and see if the wire tie is still in there, but we'll check the video, no problem. And I can feel some wire tie looking thing inside a trash bag. I can feel it through the gloves. I think. Copy, Koichi. It's really, yeah, it's really difficult to tell. Yeah, no problem. We'll check the video, Koichi. Okay, and uh, I took uh, pictures on the other side of the pitch joint. Any other areas? Checking. Okay, Koichi, we're good with pictures on that APFR. So we can have you, we'll have you guys coordinate. We'll take your okay. thoughts on whether Duke thinks it might be helpful to have a second crew member over there for that sticky ingress aid. Okay. Uh, okay, rather that, I'll go to the, uh, the fourth side. Yeah, so I got it. Um... Unfortunately, it's in nine, so I just need to recall it over to eight, and then I can get on that ingress aid. Okay. Copy. And Duke, are you seeing any possible interference sure holding down that ingress aid? Or not yet. Um, no, actually, it looks okay. Maybe I'll try it right now. Let me let me try it right now. That way, like, Quincy knows if I need his help. Okay. So I am black on black. I've got a good pull twist test. Copy, Duke. On the APFR. And I already uh, head that way. Okay, it's coming down fine, Kareeji. Okay. I guess this load was just difficult, so this is working out fine. Okay, great. Wanted an eight, or is it eight? A firm eight would be great. Yep. I understand. Okay, Zina, do you want me to uh, translate to the airlock or to the fourth side? Yeah, Koichi, we'll have you head to the airlock and get connected on the airlock during extender. Great. Copy. Okay, you can say just fold it down. Copy, Duke. Nice work. Great. Okay, Zina, then I, uh, I don't need to push the pedal of the fetal crotch here, is that right? Negative. We'll have Duke do that on her way in, so you can head to the airlock. Okay. Peace. We're com coming up right on PET of six hours. You guys are doing great.
This is Mission Control Houston, live with coverage of our spacewalk today. We're nearing the six hour mark. Our spacewalkers are wrapping up their tasks for the day. Copy, Duke. I think I mixed, I messed up some of the, uh, one of the other settings. Uh, I know Fox Up, Fox Out, I think it's 12 and 3. <laughs> It'll be Papa, Papa, Fox 3. But, uh, uh, Okay, and next up, Fox. Let me get that. Okay, Duke, then I'm gonna head my way to the airlock. Okay, Ricky, and I'll be right behind you. Okay. Houston likes that plan. Just take it nice and smooth. We'll get you back in the airlock, and then Duke, you'll follow. That's good. Sounds good. Coming down on the seat of first. Copy, Koichi. NASA astronaut Koichi Wakata making his way back into the airlock. I'm at the airlock. I'm going to open up the uh, thermal cover. Copy thermal cover. Once you've got that open, you can take your waist tether to the airlock during extender and then gates close, locked block on block. I'm just troubleshooting that. Copy, no problem, Duke. Okay, uh, I attached. I left. Wasted it through the airlock during its extender. It closed hook lock, lock on black on the small hook on my uh, left. Wasted is attached to my left during extender gate. Closed hook lock, lock on black. Copy all. That's a great config, Kuichi. We'll have you hang out there for just a moment.
You can ret to Koichi's anchor hook that's on handrail 3531 and move it to your waist tether. And we'll look for both hooks, gate closed, block, block on block. Now six hours into our spacewalk today, our spacewalkers wrapping up. They're getting ready to ingress or get into the airlock. Uh, earlier this morning at 6.45 they egressed. Now they're going back into the airlock to complete their spacewalk. Nicole Mann, this is her point of view right now, configuring her tethers to also go inside the airlock. you check the other end of your waist tether for your small hook. Okay, and I've released my rat to his. Copy. And how much time do we have before sunrise? Checking. Which you've got about five minutes until sunrise. Okay, copy that. Thank you. Just trying to get eyes on here in the dark. Can't see it. Copy, Duke. We're great on time. Just be nice and deliberate here. An external camera on you, Duke? Yeah, can you see me? Checking, not right now. We've got your HECA, but I don't think we have a good external view. We'll check. I can't pull it up far enough to see. 
Copy, Duke. Let me try something else here. The point of view of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann on your screen now. She's working to configure her tethers in a way that she can get inside of the airlock. Um, it's pretty dark out there right now, but we expect an orbital sunrise with some better lighting soon. Copy, I understand now. Let me see if I can uh, maneuver. Copy. We do have an external camera view on you, but it's pretty dark and there's some stuff in the way. I unfortunately don't have a great view. <clears throat> yeah, I can see it by my leg. Unfortunately, I just don't know which to turn. Okay, it is locked. I got eyes on it. Great work, Duke. Passing the six hour mark on our spacewalk today, about six hours and 10 minutes as our crew works to get back into the airlock. Just before both Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata had completed their tasks, uh, Duke or Nicole Mann was tasked with going way out to the port six truss and retrieving a portable foot restraint, bringing it a little bit closer. Copy. Meanwhile, Koichi Bakata had relocated a portable foot restraint from ingress aid, swapping it out with another one, um, and put that on its seat of cart for future spacewalking use. I have my anchor. And it is stuck. Great work. Awesome job, Duke. You can start translating back to the airlock. Reminder to depress the seat of cart brakes. You'll press the starboard seat of cart brakes and the port seat of cart brakes two times each on your way in. In the lower right corner of Koichi Wakata's helmet camera, you can see we're entering an, entering an orbital sunrise.
Okay, there's two buses on the uh, four seater car. Take care of them. Total. Copy, Duke. Astronaut Nicole Mann is confirming that the brakes on the CETA cart are fully engaged. After that, she's going to stow her strut bag. If you remember at the beginning of the EVA, they had to bring out the mid strut to finish installation. So she's stowing the empty bag back into the airlock before she gets in. Two buses on the port, uh, Cedar Great job, Duke. And just a heads up right now, your safety tether looks good, but for a moment was about to go between your legs. You're in a great config now, looking good. Okay. We're at PET 615. Doing great. Fine, if we take a couple of photos before we stuck our butt, go into the crew lock. You bet, Duke. really quickly there. You can see our spacewalker, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, there with a the camera taking some pictures of Koichi and perhaps of this orbital sunrise. They're about six hours and 17 minutes into their spacewalk and have completed their tasks for the day. So they're taking advantage of the scenes, grabbing a few shots, and then going back into the airlock.
like a vibe rub? Alright. Like this? Okay, and then vibe rub? rub? Alright. Uh, Alright. Hold on, I didn't get that right. Okay. Good. Uh, good, good. All right, let's go in. All right, let's go in. All right, Dina, then I'm going to ingress. Copy. Great work, both of you. Koichi, before you ingress, you can turn off your HECA. And Kuichi, since that assembly is a little bit loose above your head, if Duke needs to help push the button, that's totally fine. Yeah, that's probably better. Duke, could you uh, yeah. push it to kind of loose? Copy Koichi. Duke, you can also turn off your HECA and ingress. All right, Quincy. All right. Coming in. All right. I see your feet. Uh, no, your head first, right? At first, yeah. All right, okay. Well, I think I just bent your knees, you know, okay. so your feet look Is that good? out of the way. Okay. But if you could bend them all okay. the way, yeah, just get okay. okay. in here. All right. And I'll stand on the forward side. Oh, okay. You'll also be. I'm going to put a hook on the thermal cover before I go in. Copy. In this regard, we were going to ask you about the thermal cover, but you answered our question. Okay, yeah. We're beginning to get our final views of our spacewalkers here. You see the legs of NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. She's there in the pair of legs with the red stripes making her way into the airlock. Coming in, Casey. Take off your bender knees. Okay, I'm bending my knees here. All right. All right. I'm in. The thermal cover is closed. Awesome. 
copy Duke, you can release the hook from its stowage tether point, attach the hook to the magnetic plate D-ring, and cinch the strap until six lines are visible on the tail. Verify that the magnet is engaged. Luigi, you can start working on your SEU while Duke is working on the thermal cover. Remove it from its stowage pouch, remove your DCM cover, and connect the Copy SEU that. to your DCM. Copy. It didn't work. Copy. Copy, Duke. Verify that the magnet is engaged. And with that, you can also start working on your ICU. Okay. Uh, magnet is engaged. Nicole Mann chatting with our ground IV Zena Cardman today about releasing hooks, using D rings, magnets. This is all in an effort to close the hatch thermal cover. This is the outermost part of the hatch, and it looks like she's successfully completed that step. You just heard Koichi Wakata be referred to as EV2. Um, our EV1, of course, today is Nicole Mann, and doing these hatch operations is part of her responsibilities as the EV1. The max cooling minimizes the time necessary for SCU cooling. We're back now with our live views inside the International Space Station. We have NASA astronaut Frank Rubio, one of our suit IVs today. Copy, Duke. Still, it is still working on the TCD setting. Early this morning, Frank Rubio helped our spacewalkers into their spacesuits, and today he and Josh Cassett are going to help them out of their spacesuits after repressurization has begun. you both. I'm still working on the TCD BB2. Copy. Even though the hatch thermal cover is closed, it does not necessarily mean our hatch is closed. And in fact, that's still not expected to happen for several minutes now. For both of you, understand you're still working the TCV setting, but for now, we'll take you uh, take the water switch to off. Expect H2O is off message. Copy. 
PTCD is uh, max gold for EV1 and uh, for the switch coming off EV2 also. Copy you both. Order is off EV2. Copy EV2. Easy one. Copy, water off for both of you. Okay, at this point we've got a two minute wait until we can do any further steps, but next we'll be working on the hatch. Jump's going to maneuver to get eyes on the hatch. If you could go as far okay. as your head as possible. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is as far as I can go to the port side, so I'm going to go up and then roll. Yeah. I'm going to try to roll too. If you're just joining us here, our two spacewalkers are just on the other side of that door, having completed uh, what's now been a six hour and 30 minute spacewalk and counting. Uh, they're going through the steps to close the hatch behind them so that repressurization can begin. Okay, crew, you can verify that the outer hatch is clear of hardware, verify the handle position per hatch decal, and close and lock the hatch. Okay, it is clear of hardware and the handle is in the proper position. I'm going to try to back up quick. This may be my foot is hitting you. Let me know what you're Okay, I'm uh, clearing of the rolling.
want me to push your feet down? Uh, give me a second, it went back in, so I gotta push it again. Okay. NASA astronaut Josh Cassida has joined the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock. You see him there wearing the hat, speaking to NASA astronaut Frank Rubio in the bluish black shirt. Okay, crew, we are ready for the repress. Check that your SCUs are connected to the DCM. We've got your water off for two minutes. Check that the EV hatch is closed and locked. Okay, EV hatch is closed and locked. Not a very satisfying click, is it? <laughs> good config to us, Duke. It's not a very noticeable detent. Okay, on the UIA, check okay. oxygen for EMU 1 and 2 valves are open. UIA oxygen, EMU 1 and 2 are open. Switch power for EV 1 and 2 on and check that the EMU LEDs are on. EV1 and 2 volts are between 18 and 19. Verified 18.6 on both. Copy 18.6 on both. On your the hatch is officially closed and Xena Cardman is now walking our spacewalking astronauts through a pre-repressurization checklist. After this is completed, repressurization can begin. EV1 and 2 on SCU power. On your DCM, take your O2 actuator to press. The view you're seeing now is that of Mission Control Houston in the International Space Station's flight control room. This is the view of all the flight controllers in the room under the direction of Flight Director Chloe Maring as they're working to get the spacewalking astronauts ready for repressurization. EV2 in press. Copy EV2. EV1 in press. Copy EV1 and 2 in press. Oh, Great work, both of you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Check that the EV hatch M panel oh. <laughs> is closed. All right. EV hatch M panel closed. Oh. 
Okay, ED2, we're actually showing you not quite in press just yet. If you could give your O2 actuator a little wiggle and make sure that it's fully in the press detent. Okay, I'm jiggling it. And Duke, we'll take a wiggle test from you as well. Wiggle coming. It wiggles, but still it says the question mark. Oh, it looks like it's bad. DB2 DCM shows the both actuator in that press. Copy, Koichi. We see you both in press. Okay, check that the EV hatch MPEV is closed. IV hatch equalization valve throttle off to norm at your desired rate. EV expect an alert tone. Okay, and uh, Zena, I am with you on one, and I will take it from here. Great job. You've got it. Over to you, Frank. Congratulations to you all. And thanks so much to the team for all the effort you put into the troubleshooting and all the hours added. It was a great, uh, great space and great procedures that you gave us to get that uh, mod kit installed. And well done, Kaliki, for sticking with it. <laughs> great job, Duke, and a great job, Zina. And uh, thank you to the entire team for the entire uh, wonderful uh, procedures and uh, real-time advice for the troubleshooting. It worked out great. I'd like to uh, thank uh, JAXA folks who are supporting in Houston and in Tsukuba. Nihon no minasan, konkai no katsuko, sengai katsuko ni atari ni goshin itadaki arigato gozaimashita. Ayo jutsu wa shikoku no uchu no naka de temo kagae ki meemashita. Jinrei no kakegai no nai uchu no kenkyu shitetsu no kibo to kanose o shoucho shite riyo na kagae ki de. Okay, guys, welcome back. Great job out there. It's good to have you back. Okay, I'll be uh, throttling the IV hatch valve from off to norm. Let me know if the rates work well for you. Our ground IV, Zena Cardman, has handed off her duties of talking to these spacewalkers over to Frank Rubio, who's on your screen now. He'll be continuing with the rest of the steps until um, they get their spacesuits off. Okay, it's started. Let me know if that works. We are going to go up to five and pause there. You should expect an alert tone at four PSI. The crew there just shared some kind words with the team here on the ground, namely thanking them for the troubleshooting measures happening between the January 20th spacewalk and now as they went out today to do some of the fixes, try some new workarounds. And ultimately, it led to success. Now repressurization has begun, as you can hear that sound in the background. We're going to vacuum. A vacuum, we started at about 0 0.3 PSI, and we're steadily moving up. We're going to do a suit check at 5 PSI. Today's spacewalk concluded when our spacewalkers turned their spacesuits off of battery power at a time of 1.26 p.m. Central Time, 2.26 p.m. Eastern, bringing their total spacewalking time to 6 hours and 41 minutes. Okay, we're at 5 
side. We'll pause here for two minutes until uh, the pressure stabilizes. The crew lock is now sitting at just above 5 PSI where we're doing a planned hold. Make sure everything is okay before continuing back up to the pressure of the International Space Station and that of sea level here on Earth of 14.7 PSI. So we're going to wait a minute here. These same steps were followed but in reverse during depressurization as they prepared to get out the door. Now they're preparing to get back into the space station after their spacewalk. Yeah, guys, the pressure has been stable for um, one minute with a delta of less than one. So for both of you, check switch and go up the heaters off, OFF. Off for EV1. Off for EV2. Great. Uh, for both of you, please check your gloves for contamination and reports any uh, noticeable abnormalities. EV1 gloves are clean. EV2 uh, gloves uh, clean. Great to hear. Uh, for both of you, take your O2 actuator to IV. And work. And work. EV1 is in IV. EV2 is in IV. And copy EV2. Good job. Okay, I will be uh, throttling the equalization valve, and uh, we're going to go to a DPDT of zero here. Let me know how this works for you. Copy. Starting now. After entering a momentary hold at 5 PSI, repressurization has begun to continue.
Today's spacewalk began at 6.45 a.m. Central Time, ending at 1.26 p.m. Central Time for a total of six hours and 41 minutes. Let's take a look at the spacewalk by the numbers. It was the 259th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It was the second space station spacewalk of 2023 and the sixth spacewalk of Expedition 68. It was the second spacewalk of both Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann's career, totaling 14 hours and two minutes of their career spacewalking time. Today's spacewalk again lasted six hours and 41 minutes, which led to 68 days, 12 hours and 28 minutes of total spacewalking time. These 68 days refer to the total spacewalking time of all 259 spacewalks in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. This year, it being the sixth from Expedition 68, five out of the Quest airlock where our spacewalking astronauts are now, and one from the Poisk airlock. With the conclusion of this spacewalk, that brings the total spacewalking hours of Expedition 68 to 41 hours and 51 minutes. Repressurization almost complete now, hovering above 13 PSI, making its way to 14.7. Repressurization continues as we momentarily lost our view of that crew lock of the Quest Era lock. Um, you're now seeing the mission control team who worked on today's operation monitoring our spacewalkers, coming up with troubleshooting solutions as they worked to get that mid strut of this mod kit installed. The man standing at the back of the room there, that's Keith Johnson. He knows the ins and outs of the procedures that we did today, coming up with many of the solutions and consulting with his teams in the back rooms, relaying his data to the row just in front of him, our flight director, Chloe Maring, and our ground IV, the person who communicated all of the instructions with our crew today, Zena Cardman, our astronaut. Repressurization is complete and the hatch has been opened. Thank you guys. Looks like Koichi Wakata, our astronaut from Japan, is the first out of the hatch. Houston Station on one, you have a go for step four of one decimal two four zero. Houston copies, thanks, Frank.
NASA astronaut Josh Cassida you see there in the hat in the lower left corner of your screen with NASA astronaut Frank Rubio in the short sleeves in the upper right working now with spacewalker Koichi Wakata getting his uh, safer unit off getting his helmet off I'm going to get his gloves off as well. Houston, heads up, uh, Space Ground 1, the crew is no longer hot mic'd. Understand, crew is no longer hot mic'd, thanks so much. This is the Quest airlock aboard the International Space Station. Uh, what you see in the foreground here with uh, astronaut Koichi Wakata, Frank Rubio, and Josh Cassida, that's what's known as the equipment lock section of the Quest airlock. Nicole Mann, you can kind of see her legs there with the red stripes. She is still in the crew lock. She's going to make her way over to the equipment lock with the help of our ground, I excuse me, with the help of our suit IVs here. Nicole Mann's being helped into the crew lock now, into the equipment lock now. Just like they did with Koichi Wakata, our suit IVs Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida are working on either side of our spacewalker, working to remove the safer units, the simplified aid for EVA rescue. Our spacewalkers today are wrapping up. They are both inside the hatch. They've re gone, undergone repressurization and are back into the equipment lock with our 
suit IVs who are helping them kind of get out of their suits right now. To recap what they've accomplished today, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann and Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata successfully installed a mod kit. This is a necessary step to set the stage for the delivery of the next set of IROSAs, or roll out solar arrays, on SpaceX's 28th cargo resupply launch this summer in an effort to in an effort to revamp the International Space Station's power channels, give it a little bit more power with these rollout solar arrays. They began work on this structure in January and completed their installation today after some teamwork and collaboration with the team here in Mission Control. This involved work on a lower and mid strut and wrapped up their work by tightening the bolts today, rigidizing the structure, getting it ready for these IROSAs. They went on to do some work that could save time for future spacewalkers including Nicole Mann, who delivered a bundle of cables out to the 1B power channel. Koichi Wakata swapped out an ingress aid on a portable foot restraint that had some trouble rotating from side to side. Now when it's used for the next spacewalk, the user won't have to spend time swapping it out themselves. And Nicole Mann ventured out to the port 6 truss to bring a different portable foot restraint closer to the work site for future spacewalks. We're back with our live views now. Koichi Wakata on the left and Nicole Mann on the right. Back with our live views now. Josh Cassidy and now removing the HECA. Part of the straps onto the helmet gives us some nice high definition views of their point of view. That's Wakata that he's working on on the left.
Hey, Josh, there's a flashlight in front of the camera, if you can grab it for us. Thank you. Josh Cassidy now working to remove the gloves of Japanese astronaut Koichi Okada. And it looks like Frank Rubio is doing the same on the right side to Nicole Mann. And the gloves are off as our suit IVs, NASA astronaut Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida work to get our spacewalkers out of their spacesuits right now. Of course, having some playful pictures taken along the way. This photography is also crucial to documenting this post-spacewalk, the condition of the spacesuits, the location of where they're stowing everything. And the helmets are off on our spacewalkers. Nicole Mann on the right and Koichi Wakata on the left. All smiles all around. This was their second spacewalk. And of course, the second spacewalk of 2023 as well. Their total spacewalking time equals 14 hours, 2 minutes, mostly with the goal of setting up the mod kit on the 1A power channel of the International Space Station. They previously wrapped up installing the 1B power channel as well, finishing the 1A Each channel one, today. You could look to your left and smile real quick. Perfect. Excellent family photo there. Thanks, guys. Not only did Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata finish installing this mod kit to set the stage for future delivery of the IROSA's International Space Station rollout solar arrays for future power upgrades, but they also did a lot of work setting the stage for future spacewalks, bringing in equipment that was farther away, bringing it to the work site for future spacewalks, replacing sticky portable foot restraints and ingress aids with ones that will make the lives just a little bit easier of our future spacewalkers.
these spacewalkers set their spacesuits to battery power at 6.45 a.m., leading them to a six-hour, 41-minute spacewalk to get these installations complete and these, f these tasks to set them up for success for future spacewalks. Thank you for watching and sending in your questions via Ask NASA. You can follow along with Expedition 68's mission on the International Space Station blog and on social media. That concludes our coverage today. Thanks for watching. This is Mission Control Houston. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal 